The Webby Award voting is heating up and talking. Sopranos is nominated for the best podcast in film and TV. I want to congratulate you. Congratulate you. On your nomination. I'm being dead serious. No. People think it's a joke. It's, it's a not. Big deal. We're also very proud of this. Yeah. We're not taking it lightly. We started this podcast at the beginning of the pandemic. And it turned out, thanks to you fans, uh, to be a huge success. And we couldn't be happier or prouder. And now it's up to you. We need your help one more time, you fans, to decide the winner. Let's motherfuck the podcast world and vote. Talking Sopranos, the best podcast in film and TV, really. We need your help. Yeah, Get we need out help because we're the only one that's independent. The other ones are with big podcast networks and ones with HBO and ones with, I think, Entertainment Weekly. We need your help. Listen, we've never asked you for anything except to watch. We never charged you money. We don't ask for some, you know money to Patreon or that kind of stuff. Nothing like that. We need your vote. If you love the show, this is what you do. If you hate the show. If you hate the show, vote for us anyway. Vote for us. <laughs> like we said, if you, uh, we made you cry, cringe, laugh. Angry, furious. Uh, here's what you got to do. You go to vote.webbyawards.com. That's vote.webbyawards.com. W-E-B-B-Y. Vote for Talking Sopranos to win the best podcast in the film and TV category. The direct link to vote for Talking Sopranos is in the show description below. You can also go to our website at TalkingSopranos.com, click the link on our homepage to vote. Every vote counts. Vote now. Voting's open until May 6, which is not a lot of time. Uh, thanks for your support. Please keep watching, keep listening, and vote. Only got until May 6th, so help us out, folks. What's happening there, my friend? I am good. I am very, very good. We have gotten uh, another terrific show today. We got Maureen Van Zant, who played Gabriella. Uh, big, big part of the show. Really big part of the show. And... Uh, uh, Maureen is the real life wife of Stevie Van Zandt, and she played his on screen wife, Gabriella Dante, in 28 episodes. 28 out of the 86. She's appeared in several films and TV shows Lily Hammer, The Honey Zoomers, Remedy, and The Christmas Chronicles. She's a philanthropist. Uh, who works tirelessly with a number of charities and nonprofit organizations helping raise money for teachers, educators, first responders, firefighters, veterans, actors, and performers in need. She also is an acting coach, teacher, I believe. We'll talk to her about that. Uh, I believe she started out as a dancer. Uh, and uh, I know her for a long time, but I, I got a million questions. I'm sure you do also. Yes, so let's yes, bring we're around. very happy to have you. Maureen Van Zant, ladies and gentlemen. There she is. Hey, how are you guys? How are you? We're very good. I'm great. Thank ha you. Great. Very happy to have you on a show today. Thank, um, thank you for doing this. Yeah. Oh, I'm so happy to thank be you here. Very Congratulations much. on all your success with it. It's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We want to, you know, we want to know, I want to hear a little bit about how you started in show business how you you know a lot of a lot of our fans love to hear the stories of how you go from somebody who dreams about it who wants to do it to how you put that in motion because it's hard we all know you know we we've heard the stories it's very it's a very very difficult world to get into and to commit your life to so we, we love hearing how people entered that world what their journey was so if you take us take us through that for how it happened for you well, I started out as, as a five-year-old whose best friend was going to a ballet class, and I decided to tag along with her. Um, she quit after one class. I stayed and did it for the rest of my life. So I, I did that, and um, I became, um, I, I guess you would call it a child actor. I ended up on Broadway in Gypsy as a little girl uh, dancing, 
And then um, I continued to study ballet for many years, ended up in a ballet company. I did hair on Broadway when I took a little break from ballet. So I, I did a few Broadway things. I did Phantom for a very short time. But um, I, I really was in the ballet world. And so that was just a lot of training from age five till about um, 17 when I joined a ballet company. And I did that. Uh, the whole time that I was dancing, I was taking acting lessons because I, I always, you know, wanted the stories that I told in the ballets to be real stories and to know how to tell them. So I, I studied acting. And um, when I got injured dancing, where did you study? I, uh, study acting. I actually started out in New Jersey at the, the Garden State Ballet. So that was where my, my first instruction was. And then, then I moved on to New York and went to high school performing arts for a while. So I was always in that world, but really more in dance than anything else. I, I think I, I wanted to act, but, but as a dancer, you, um, you kind of learn not to use your voice so much. So I became scared of the acting the more I did the dancing. And uh, Maurice, so now Tony Sirico told us he knew you before he knew Stevie. Definitely. I, I met Tony Sirico when I was about 18, probably. Uh, it was around the time that I was doing hair, and I used to go to a club called Steve Paul's The Scene, which was on 46th Street between 8th and 9th Avenue. It was the rock club. I mean, everyone played there. And Jimi Hendrix hung out there every day, and every night, I should say. And any band that was in town, they either hung out there or they played there, and it was just really the place to be. And, and Tony would come in there and uh, kind of do his thing. He was very much a fish out of water. Everybody was terrified of him, <laughs> including me, the little 18-year-old girl. And he was very intimidating then as he is now. Uh, and I hadn't seen him for years and years. And I knew him as Junior at that time. And then I go to my first table read the Sopranos and he comes up to me and he's talking to me like he knows me. I had no idea who he was. And he's like, it's Junior. And then I thought, Jesus Christ, like, how's this guy? And he said, well, yeah, you were one of those groupies that used to hang out with Jimi Hendrix. So that, that's how he kind of introduced me to everybody. Oh, that is funny. And now what did he, he just hung around the club? Is, those are days he was yeah. shaking down clubs? And yeah, I, I guess Tony should be the one to tell you that, not me. But <laughs> for so much. Well, he, I, I know what he some, did. He told me. He used yeah, to go he in. Us. He'd go in with some other guys. And he'd start fights and harassing people, and then he'd convince them to either pay them off, give them jobs as bouncers or something like that, or they'd make even bigger scenes the next time. That well, was the Michael, easy, the easy way. The other way was a lot more strong arm. Exactly. You know, that's what he you went to jail for. But he told me that he was open about it. He's done that documentary, The Big Bang, and he spoke about. Oh, I'm not okay. revealing yeah, stuff I mean, he, he never well, spoke about publicly. No, no, no. I mean, he always been very open about that. I just wasn't sure yeah. if he, he'd spoken about it. Um, uh, hey, Maureen, lately. he told He's Michael cool. that he used to give Jimi Hendrix wedgies. He told <laughs> well, Michael. Yeah, that's, that. I don't remember that, but I know he used to <laughs> follow him into the men's room a lot. And I think just to that's sort of torture him. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. exactly what he said. I, I, don't know I when followed I him in the bathroom I, I and I gave him a wedgie. <laughs> he said that to me. That's exactly right. And so that, that's one of the weirdest images you can imagine, right? It's uh, yeah, you, you Holy can Walnuts imagine. and Jimi Hendrix. That is very right. funny. Right. I, I do remember a night there when the band, the Turtles, where most of the guys from the Turtles were playing, and Tony and his guys came in and disrupted the whole thing, caused a huge fight. And I remember seeing Jimmy outside in a white suit with blood all over him. That was, that was a memory I'll never forget. He was looking, you know, his usual Jimmy self, a beautiful, gorgeous, perfect white suit and the hat and everything. And then there was blood all over the place. Wow. But um, uh, so Did you see Jimmy perform? Did you ever see him play live? Hendrix? Oh, many times, yeah. I, I was friends really? with him. And, yeah. Oh, so, wow. It was, uh, wow. It, it was a great time. And, and Tony was, uh, was a little part of that, yeah. Wow. And uh, is it true you saw the, uh, did you see the Beatles? Were you there at the Ed Sullivan Theater? I was, and I was, I saw them at Forest Hills Tennis Stadium. I saw them at both times at Shea Stadium. I saw them in uh, Washington, D.C. I was a Beatle maniac who would, like, jump out the window of my house uh, and, and go and, you know, stand in front of the Beatles Hotel at 2 o'clock <laughs> in the morning. My parents thought I was dead, yeah. <laughs> Is, well, that must have, when you finally met Stevie, was that a bonding point between you? Because he was a big Beatles guy too, right? Well, yeah. I mean, he actually was at the concerts that, that I was at, which which was funny. So we were in that same place. And we used to 
both go to the Cafe Wa on McDougal Street, which is actually the first time I've ever met Jimmy when he was playing there. He was called Jimmy James. And so I met him there when I was about 14 or 15. But Stephen and Bruce used to go to that same club, but you know, they were probably a foot away from me, and I, you know, we never crossed paths. Wow. That is so wild. <laughs> When did you, uh, is there like, did you go to a acting conservatory like and study with acting, acting teachers and that kind of thing? Um, I studied with Stella Adler for a while. I oh, you did? Studied okay. a lot of, yeah, I studied at HB with Herbert Berghoff and Michael Beckett, Elizabeth Wilson, um, some great teachers there. And then when I, when I got older, when, when I was injured from dancing, I didn't know what to do with myself. I decided to go to college, which I had never done. And I went to Marymount Manhattan College and was in the theater department there. So I, I studied, I think, very seriously there. I was the only old person in the class, but it was great. You studied with Stella Adler herself? Yes. And how yeah. was that? Very interesting. I mean, very um, eccentric, and but expiring. And I thought she was a really great teacher. And uh, did a lot of Tennessee Williams with her. And, you know, he's my favorite playwright. So that, that was he's an honor. He's my favorite, too. He's number one yeah, for me. Learned Always. So, so much from her. It was just such, I did a workshop just of Williams with her, which I'll never forget to me. It was the best experience of my life studying anything. No, he's, he's uh, always been just really special. You know, uh, I was watching recently Streetcar, the movie, and, you know, yes. he, he manages to pull off dialogue that is like, it's like a poem, but he makes it, he pulls it off into reality, which very few writers can really do. It's exactly, it was poetry, but very earthy at the same time. In, yes. in fact, right now, I'm working on Streetcar with our, our acting group, with Vinnie Pastor is directing it, and, and I'm Blanche. And, you know, we're doing a Zoom, uh, whatever of it, workshop, and, and it's been, it's been like a dream to work on it. And so much fun, and we've just been working and working on it for months now. And we don't know what we're going to do with it, but we just decided to take something beautiful and inspiring and, and, and work on. It. So hopefully, we'll get to perform it one day. And how else is doing it with you? What um, other actors? Actors from my theater company, Renegade Theater. Okay. So um, I'm not sure if you know any of them, but a lot of really, really good actors, and um, it, it's it's been it's been very good. How's Vinny as so a far? director, Maury? Well. You know, how <laughs> he, he's, he's been, he's fun. You know, he's, um, he has his own way of directing, but, but um, it's great because he speaks to everyone as, as a friend, you know, he's not intimidating any of the, us and he really, really loves to play. And I think that's the most important thing that he has such a passion and love for it, that he's pushing us all to really, really work hard on it and, and really get into it as deeply as we can. And, and I'm, I'm having a blast with it. That's good. If and, nothing ever happens with it, I'm just happy that, that I got to do it. So uh, we'll see. Hey, uh, Maureen, so did you read for any other roles besides uh, uh, Gabriella on The Sopranos? Was that the first or only role, or did you come in for yeah, other well, stuff? Yeah, well, it was, no, it was weird. I, I, I obviously had known the show had been on for a year, and I was at the, the rap party for the first season. I think it was John's Pizzeria or something like that. <laughs> it was. And George that was the premiere party. John's Pizza. Oh, it was the premiere party. Yeah, it was one. Yeah. One, yeah, that's right. It was a premiere party. So that was after the first season. And um, George Ann Walken, who was a casting person, came up to me and she said, We need to get a new wife for Silvio. And I had been in acting class with um, Paul Schulze, who played Father Phil. And, you know, I had never mentioned anything about acting to George Ann. I, mean, I just thought, you know, I married Stephen. That's it. I'm not trying to get part in the show or anything like that and uh she said well you know paul told me that you know you act he's worked with you a lot and would you be interested in coming in to read for the role of, of steven's wife silvio's wife and and first thought was no i think that's going to be really weird um you know if i get it it will be weird if i don't get it it, it will be weird and, and then i thought about it and i thought well probably have no shot at getting it anyway so, so i just went in and i did it and uh and and i just tried to have fun with it and, and I got, I remember I got to um, George Ann's office and there were like a ton of women sitting in the hallway waiting to read and they all looked really Italian. And I thought, oh, I'm definitely not getting it. And uh, even though I am. And, and so I just thought I, I didn't have anything to lose. So, so I went and I read for it and that was it. So that was, that was the only part that I ever had any kind of involvement with. But and I was, I was you, very, very. 
Did you read for David? Did you have to, was he there or? I did. Yeah, they, they narrowed it down to four people, four actresses. And we all had to go in and do it in front of David and the writers and, you know, the whole production crew. And it was, it was very, very daunting for me. But it was, um, it was an experience I'll, I'll never forget. Yeah, very, very interesting and, and very shocking to find out that, that, that I had it. That was great. The first scene you yes, did, do you remember? It, yeah, it, it was a scene with Edie and it was a pretty big scene. And I thought, Jesus Christ, you know, it was a lot. It ended up getting cut. Of, I mean, not cut completely, but cut down quite a bit. But it was a quite a long scene. And it was when you, your character, was in the hospital. And that was the first episode I was, I was really in. I think I was in another episode. I appeared in one right before that where I just made a phone call. But I actually shot that after the episode when, when your character was in the hospital. So that was it. I was walking down the hallway with Edie and we were talking and gossiping and all that kind of stuff. And... It was very scary for me because I, I had only ever worked in, in theater and on stage as a dancer. And it was my first experience of doing any kind of TV. And I, I said that to Edie and she said, don't tell anybody and just 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 do it. And and it was great. She really made me feel um, comfortable and, and at home. And, and, you know, I got through it. It, it. it was fun. And most of your scenes were with Edie. So that must have been delightful, I'm sure. I mean, uh Oh, it was great. Yeah. I mean, I had a lot of scenes with the women and they were always kind of fun scenes. So, um, yeah, yeah, they were great. It, it was great to, you know, to, to be around Edie. She's such a, you know, as you all know, such an amazing professional and just to watch the way she worked and how effortless it seemed with her. Um, it, it was just really something that to learn from. Yeah. She's, she's awesome. She's always like, I mean, she's, one of the best there is, really, to, um, um, in my opinion. Um, but I wanted to ask you, what was your way into the character? W w was this world familiar to you? Were these people familiar to you? Do, and did you base Gabrielle on somebody specific, or what was your way in? Well, actually, I had grown up in a mafia family in New oh, Jersey. Ah, so I did not know that. This was very much my life, yes. Okay. And all, and right. all my life... I I tried to work at being the little ballerina and getting rid of the New Jersey accent and not saying like you jerk off and things like that to everybody. And then I get the part and I think I have to go back to that. So I kind of kind of based her on my sister, who um, was very sort of naive, naive in a way, very New Jersey, you know, mafia She's great. wife. Your part. sister is really cool. The last concert I was at, we were at together at Jesse Mallon's show. We were there together and we hung yep, out a I, little I bit. Yeah, I saw you there too. I know. Maria yeah. is great. Uh, but uh, my youngest sister, who's very New Jersey, you know, with the nails and the hair and the jewelry and, and all this stuff, but a very sweet and nice kind of version of the New Jersey housewives. Um, so I, I, kind of, I kind of based her a little bit on her. And, and just the women that I grew up around, more of the old school mafia wives who didn't really they didn't want to run the show they didn't want to be the boss or, or, or take charge of anything they just kind of wanted to get their nails done and their hair done and have nice clothes and and and, and just you know just do that just be a support to their husbands and i think that's that's what gabby was really right and accepting that lifestyle for what it is and just, and you know and that's yeah that's okay it and appreciating the um you know, the, the benefits that you get from it right. and maybe not really looking closely at the really scary things that happen with it. The dark yeah. side. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, we, yep. we, talk, we talked about that. Silvio was obviously, you know, a scary, uh, a scary uh, common sense, you know, right hand man to Tony. But he also was very much a family man. Uh, you guys had a daughter. On the show, I mean, yes. you saw his home life. Uh, when Silvio became the temporary boss, you were very much like you said. Uh, those were great scenes. That was a really good episode for the two of you. Yeah, really good. Uh, when when yeah, I was, uh, was really grateful to have that because that that was that was a nice uh, nice bit of work to be able to do. And we had up to that point really not done scenes together you know maybe a line here or we read a you know a funeral together or a christening together but we never really had anything like that together so it, it was fun 
Did you run lines together at home, or you you worked uh, separate together? You know, were you separate, or in that particular scene, were you do uh, helping each other out? Um. I don't remember running lines at home. I don't think I would have wanted to because I think I would have had it cross over too much. So I, I kind of wanted to leave that separately. Like I went in at, as her and, and he was Silvio and it wasn't us at home. I, I think, I'm not sure, but I think, don't I, doesn't Bobby run into the house and walks into your house? Yeah. If, right? I think you answer the For door sure. and I walk in. Yeah, yeah, and I'm pissed off that you've shown up at this time. Yeah, because yeah. Silvio's yeah, yeah, yeah. asthma attack, and he's, you know, worrying about what's, what is he going to do and how is he going to be the boss and all this stuff. Yeah, and then you kind of show up at exactly the wrong moment. That's right. I remember that. Then he's uh, getting uh, – Silvio's going away. He's in the ambulance in the gurney, and yep. I'm asking him questions. Yes, that's right. You're still there trying to, try to talk to him. Uh, Maureen, who was your favorite character on the show? Livia. Olivia. Fantastic. You know, she was so I fantastic. mean, there, I think the thing about this show is that every single character was great. And, you know, any given day I could pick another one, any hour I could pick another one because everyone, the characters were so beautifully written. Plus the actors who were chosen to do them were perfect for the roles. But, but I just, I just love that character. The idea of an Italian mother being evil like that because I had grown up with the nice Italian grandmother and mother and aunts and all that stuff. And I thought, well, I've never met any, any Italian mother like that. And then, you know, you find out later on that David Chase based on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Stephen but, told us that story. He said, he said to David, I, you know, I don't really believe this. I love this script. I love these characters. I don't believe this mother thing that you want, you know, this character is really kind of, I don't buy that. I've known Italians all my life. I am Italian. And David said, that's my mother. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Stephen was like, "Uh oh, maybe I'm not going to get this gig." Little faux pas there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but but it's true. I th I think that's why I loved her, and I loved that Nancy Marchand played her. She'd always been an actress that I loved, and I, and she was just absolutely brilliant. And again, a little bit against the type, uh, not a little bit, a lot against the type of who you would think would have been cast in that. And and she she was just perfection. I think. Uh oh yeah uh, yeah. Hey, uh, Maureen, now, are you a movie buff, too? You are, I think, right? I know Steven is. You are. And you always have been? I mean, you've always... Always, always. I, I, When I was a little kid, I used to, you know, my mother would be watching movies late at night and uh, the Late Late Show and all that, and I would crawl out of my bedroom uh, and crawl on the floor and hide behind the couch and try to watch the movies while she was, because I was supposed to be in bed. So I was always very obsessed with, with, oh. with film. And, you know, any any kind of entertainment, music, film, all of it. Well, you got yeah, the best too. of both worlds, that's for sure. Uh, like we yeah, told, and, you know, uh, we told Stevie he's possibly the greatest band uh, in the history of rock and roll and possibly the greatest TV show. And you've been a part of both of those things. So that's pretty goddamn incredible. Yeah, I mean, for him, not, not a bad um, way to live, right? <laughs> exactly <laughs> and now do, what about to, teaching you enjoy teaching yeah yeah i um i'd always taught dance and i've um been teaching acting to ballet dancers at, at, at a ballet um company for a while so but it's really more to help them in their dance performances they're not going on stage to act um but i was doing that for, for quite a while and really really loving it and then uh, Vinnie Pastor got a class down at HB Studios, and he asked me if I would come and be the co-teacher with him. And uh, so I've been doing that for, for a couple of years, and, and it's, it's, it's been incredible. It's been, like, so, so much fun. And, um, and we, you know, we work together all the time now. We have the theater company together, and we have a lot of really great young, not, some not even so young. We have actors of all ages and types, and, and they've, a lot of them have come out of the class. And it's been a real... It's a great family thing, which, um, you know, we've missed not being able to, to be at the studio, but we've been keeping it up on Zoom. That's why we're doing this streetcar thing. We're using some of our theater company people and some of the students. And so we're just trying to keep things going and keep everybody working and, you know, creative and feel like you're still doing something, which is really difficult right now. It is. It is difficult. Um, I wanted to ask you, what's your, what's your favorite memory 
from your time on The Sopranos? Like, is there something that you you really hold kind of dear to your heart that you you know that you look back with a lot of fondness, like a particular moment or scene or whatever, or could maybe not on the set, maybe it's you know another another moment, but. I, it, it, it's hard to say. I, I think the very last episode where um, I'm in the room with, with Jimmy when Silvio is in the coma and it was just it was a very silent moment of kind of the two of us just looking at Silvio and I guess both of us wondering what's going to happen here. And it, it was just such a very strong moment for me. And that was because of Jimmy, really. I mean, you could feel the, the the love coming out of him and also I think there was a lot of emotion because it was the last episode it, it was just a really beautiful moment it was a very tiny moment and, and 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 I have to say that I think the most fun moment was the the Livia memorial scene I'll oh always remember god. that oh Laugh my god whole room just cracked up no one could stop laughing and and your rap oh, that you yeah. gave and every time you started talking i thought i have to get out of this room like i can't do this anymore so that 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 whole scene was was so much fun for me you know just when you can go on on set and, and you're working but you're laughing the whole time and everybody else is know. kind of same energy as you I, I thought that that was a really fun fun scene to be part I, of that's one of my favorite memories too and it and it really you know what 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 hit, hits me about that is it's a bunch of people who really liked being together. It's not even so much yeah. about the acting and, and the show at that point. It's a bunch of people who just liked each other a lot and liked being together. And that's why that's why that moment happened. You know what I mean? Exactly. We all felt comfortable enough to laugh like that, you know? Yeah, it, it was like a bunch of kids in school. And, yeah, you know, know. someone would, I remember, I remember Suzanne Shepard started yelling at us and saying, you, you guys, you have to be professional and stop it. And then the next take, she burst out laughing. <laughs> and it, was just, it was very, very crazy. But uh, it really Shepherd. was like, like the little friends being in, in the classroom together and trying not to laugh, but, but not being able to help it. So it was great. Uh, Maureen, I forgot to ask Stephen, but Little Richard married you guys? Yes. Little Richard. Now, how'd that happen? Were you friends Talk with him, Stevie? It. How'd that happen? Um, I, I know he had worked on that um, sort of the oldies circuit for a while, so he may have come across him then. I don't know. I, I certainly didn't know him. And we were planning the wedding. We were actually going to get married in, in Italy and just have nobody there and be very quiet about it. And then it kind of the, the Italian families got really pissed off that we were sneaking off and doing that. So then we ended up having a big wedding and. And, uh, you know, as Stephen always thinks, like, what's the biggest thing I can do here? Uh, and he thought, oh, I'll get little Richard to do it. He's a minister. And I'm like, yeah, OK, not going to happen. And he did it. And he came up from Georgia with his entourage. And uh, I mean, this would rival that Livia Memorial scene. But that's how crazy the whole thing was. And um, I, I really regret we did have film footage of it and it's disappeared over the years. Oh. With with someone who filmed it, I think, and we have not been able to track it down. And and uh, I'd really give anything to to have that. I have photos and stuff like that. But but the actual the rap that he gave at that at that ceremony was beyond belief. Yeah. And didn't you have Percy it, Sledge do when a man loves a woman? Is did did that? Yes, was that he sang at that. the wedding. No. He did, and um, we had the the orchestra from the Godfather movie. They they were the band. Really? Wow! Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's great. So I, you know, didn't even remember half of this stuff because I was so panicked that day. But yeah, it was. Uh, I'm sure there was a lot of stuff that I missed, but everybody had a good time. It was. Uh, it was a very crazy wedding. It was on New Year's Eve, and um, where was it? Um, there was a, a ballet studio that I used to study at uh, called the Harkness House, which was a gorgeous old townhouse in the East 80s, I think, owned by this woman Rebecca Harkness, who was a philanthropist for the arts. And people used to rent it out for events because it was gorgeous. It looked like a very old time ballet studio with the chandeliers and the velvet walls. And so we just rented the whole townhouse and and we used all four or five floors and each floor there was something different going on. We had all our wedding gifts were left at a table in the lobby and they all got stolen. Some people walked in. It was New Year's Eve, so people were all over the streets. They walked in and stole all the wedding oh, gifts. Oh my gosh. Oh my and, God. But, but we had a good time anyway. So it was. I think you know people really uh, remember it as a very unique event. I barely remember it. The Godfather Orchestra. I loved that. That was fantastic. That Which was one, the one that yeah. was on stage in the at the wedding scene in the Godfather? That yes. orchestra. Or the, or the, yeah. 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 Wow. Exactly. Wow, and then wow, and wow. then the East Street Band did a whole set. 
I, I left that out. So they did a whole concert at it too. So it was, uh, there was some entertainment there. <laughs> oh my God. That is incredible. Great. Um, wow. I also want to ask you, what is your take on the ending of the Sopranos? My take is that, um, nothing cataclysmic happened at that moment. Just life went on. And I, I, I just felt that it was, uh, like a, that we had been allowed a, a glimpse into the life of this man and his family and his associates for a while, and then we weren't allowed to see it anymore, and, and things would just go on as they were supposed to go on. So I, I didn't get a feeling that he got killed. I didn't get a feeling um, that anything major happened. I just felt that, that this is the life that he was going to have to live the rest of his life, always kind of looking over his shoulder and wondering what is the next moment. The, that, that was how I always saw it. That's what, I agree with you completely. That's, That's your exactly take, what I think. Exactly. Nothing happened. What you saw is what you saw. Nothing happened. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's it's just amazing that all these years later, people are still discussing it and people are asking about it and um, it's still arguing. And I, I think it's just great that that moment made everybody think so much and affected everybody so much. I know. I mean, we're doing a podcast with hundreds of thousands of people listening, watching every week about a show that went off the air 14 years ago. It's crazy. Exactly. I mean, I had people come up to me on the street and say, like, that outfit you wore at the hospital that time, like, that was really inappropriate. <laughs> but, and, <laughs> and, like, I was just trying to remember that. <laughs> yeah, it is incredible. They have better memories than, than I do of the show. I mean, it's it's oh, pretty wild. Absolutely. Do you watch the show? Have you seen it recently? Or Because uh, Steve and I did not watch the show since it initially aired until we went back to watch it for the podcast and study it so we can talk about it. But what about you? No, I, I, I never went back and watched it. You know, a after Jimmy passed away, I didn't think I would ever want to look at it. And I, I know that Stephen, after a while, started to look at it again. And I kind of walk in the room and I think I'm not going to watch it. And then I, I get sucked into it. And I didn't watch that much. But I, I do know that what I saw, I thought it was just way funnier than I ever thought it was. A and yeah. I felt it yeah. really, it, it really held up. Um, Time wise, you know, I, I didn't think that it, it felt like it was dated. It just it just felt like great writing, great acting. Everything about it uh, was was very alive. And, and, and just I just remember laughing at almost every line that I heard people say things I'd never heard them say before. So, yeah, it's uh, but I have not watched the, the whole thing. It's through so again, good. Like, it's know. it's so good. I mean, when you get a chance, honestly, I mean, uh, I it goes by like this. You know, you watch every episode. It is so good. Of course, the writing, and like you said, except for the cars and the phones, it holds up just like it was today. I mean, it's I, we're really enjoying watching it uh, after all these years. Did Gabriella Cook, was she a housewife like Carmela? Because Carmela's the ultimate suburban housewife, and Edie, of course, doesn't know how to boil water. <laughs> Do you cook? That's Do you joke. cook? Yeah, I think. Well, Gabby was always being asked about her eggplant parm and the cheese melt and stuff like that. I, I kind of thought she would be afraid to get her nails messed up. I, I think she cooked because she, she had to. That's what women did. Because I always saw her as an old school mafia wife. Yeah. I didn't see her as the newer breed. And I thought, yeah, she's definitely home cooking and in between doing all of her other little beauty type things that she does all day. Do you cook? I'm being a mom and a wife, yeah. Uh, Maureen, I, do yes, you, I you cook? Yes, yes, I can cook. I uh, I used to spend a lot of time with, with my, my grandmother and uh, and grandfather. I, I used to go to school about a half a block from their house and I used to pretend I was sick at school and go and so I could go and hang out with them all afternoon. And that's and my grandfather was a great cook, my grandmother was, so I just would hang out with them and, and learn how to do things from them. So, yeah, I can. I mean, I, I can't cook everything that there is, but, but I, I can cook pretty well. Michael's a good cook. I'm okay. I'm not a great Michael's cook. Michael's a good cook. Uh, I'm going to cook today. I'm making ravioli today. Mm, yeah, From I, I'm scratch? vegan, so I'm, I'm not <sighs> the uh, <laughs> biggest cook. <laughs> for. Uh, no. I, I, that's why I'm not great at cooking meats and stuff like that, but I, I can make meatballs. I can do all that Italian stuff. Yeah. No, I make my sauce from scratch, but not the ravioli. I've never, I, I've never made ravioli. I've made uh, gnocchi and um, gavadel, yep. 
from scratch, but never, never like the stuffed, you know, tortellini or ravioli. Yeah, That's ravioli. hard. Never did that, but I used to love to, to do gnocchi. I haven't done that in a long time, but that used, I used to love to yeah. put the finger. Thing. Yeah. Yes. Ho- homemade gnocchi is awesome. If it's, you know, oh, best. if you the make best. it right, it's awesome. Yeah. Really good. Maureen, thank you so much. I could not thank you enough for doing this. It's great seeing you. I haven't seen you in so many years. Thank you. I know. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Well, I'll oh, see you at the next thank concert, you. Maureen. I'll, I'll see you and your yeah, sister at the next, the next soon, show. Soon, soon. Oh, yes, soon. Sir, we we got to get back to rock and roll again. again. But thank you guys so much. Great to see you and, and, and lots of love to you both. Thank, thank you. you very Same much. You. Good to see All you. You be well. You take care. Bye. Take care. Very nice. All right, Maureen, Maureen Van Zandt. Van Zandt. <clears throat> That's, Gabriella Dante. She's so great. She was great on the show. She's such a nice woman. And, uh, so that was very nice of her to talk to us. And uh, let's take a break. Back. Season five, episode five. You know, this this episode is five, five, right? Season five, episode five. And it aired 4-4-4, April 4, 2004. Weird, right? That's weird. That I'll agree with you. That's weird. And this, I tell you what. Not blowing smoke up your ass. You're incredible in it. Drea was incredible. This is uh, the episode you submitted, and you won the Emmy that year. Wow, well, we submit. You submit two, so we submitted this one and Long Term Parking. I, uh, you were fantastic. I remember when you won the Emmy. I couldn't have been happier. Seriously, if it was if it was me, you know, all serious, no fucking, no breaking balls. I was so happy for you. You deserved it. Drea deserved it. And that was a good moment that, when you were up there. That was the first year we won Best Show uh, as the, on the Emmys. That was uh, great. We all won, so we all got to go up. That, that was a big night. And and Al won, Pacino won for Angels in America. I was backstage with him. I got pictures of us after we won. That was a big deal for me that, he, yeah. that we were there together. And then we had that party, and then we uh, went to the H. Spago party, then the other party, then the party in... It's a sweet. And, and, and my sweet. It was very ugly. We <laughs> stayed at the Four Seasons. Is that the Four Seasons? I think it was at the no, Four Seasons. No, that was Seasons. Peninsula. I think, I think it was the Four Seasons of Beverly Hills, I think. At the end, that's where we were staying. And uh, it was ugly. Ouch. No, it was, it was, that was a Peninsula because I, I had one of the bungalows, I remember. It was ugly. We celebrated, my friend. And hey, you know what I noticed in this in this uh, episode? Uh, like we always say, it holds up, and it does hold up, except for the computers and the cost of cars and stuff like that, but, and the phones, though I still have. Now, flip- why do you still have that? I still have a flip phone because. Here you go. Yeah. Okay. It has nothing to do with money, obviously. No, I know that. Okay. Uh, I I text my wife and the kids. You could text on that? I could text on that. I get your text. It takes me a long time to text because I got to do one at a time. So that way if you, well, you know, when you say, uh, bah, 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 and they always short answers. I can't give you a big answer. Oh, I just thought you were being rude. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good Really? You know, it's not rude. Wow. For all this time, I yeah. just thought you couldn't be bothered. No. You, you got on a lot the, to you do. Know, I You're say annoyed on the, that you got a text. On the way, hey, Michael, call me. Vet, you're very short on yeah, the text. Yeah, call me. Call me when you get a chance. It's always that. I can't have it. How you doing? Oh, yeah, I'm doing great. I, I don't have conversations. I'm not a 12-year-old girl. Texting. Nor am I. I don't have conversations online. Okay? But I text. I don't take pictures. I don't take pictures. I text and I so talk. You, but you're on Instagram, but you, you don't get it on that. No, it's on my computer. You do Instagram on the computer? On the computer. I have a laptop at home. You do? I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm not on Twitter. Yeah, I'm, I'm on not Twitter. on Facebook. Not on this. All I do, thing, I could, what, I could, I could look so at my email. Have, I could look. Why not have a smartphone with all because of Because I don't place. need all that crap. It'll just clog my head up even more. I don't need it. I don't take pictures. I don't need any of that stuff. Okay. I don't want I, it. I hear it. I simple. Hear it. Sim- I'm a I, simple man. You know what? Man. I'd go back to none of this shit. If I had a choice, if you say tomorrow, we're all going back to you have a phone at home and that's it, I'd go back in a minute. I have a phone. 
I still have a, a landline. I don't have a landline. I have a landline at home I, I, in California and my home here. I have landlines. I don't like to talk on the cell, but I do when I have to. Yeah. Uh, that's it. But in this in this, How episode, long have you had that phone? This particular model or phone? That you model. Know? Oh, uh, I've had this model over five years or so and what you transfer your numbers to every new phone they they put a jack and they, yeah. they, they say, transfer the numbers so you got numbers going back to when to, to when you were at the riv oh uh well that was uh, 20 years i got them going back a long time yeah i got i got phone numbers in here going back to uh some of the 90s i would say now, do you have numbers in there that would impress me <laughs> like like big stars stars unique talents you know kind of out of the box celebrities I controversial have, I have, figures i have very weird numbers that's what i mean yeah. i have a lot of priests for some reason why do you have a lot of priests i was looking i was looking a few weeks ago i don't know why i guess i know them father dom father patrick father white who married you're not me. a religious guy no but I, I know priests do they know that you're an atheist i'm not an atheist they're not no, I don't know what I, I am. You don't believe in anything. I don't know what the fuck I believe in, but uh, Father Dom. <laughs> well, a priest is not going to Father Dom's marrying my daughter. That's I not going to give a priest a I lot have, of. Uh, I have a I lot don't of priests. I believe in. Father. I have a lot of doctors over oh, the no, years. No, doctors we need. Uh, a lot of priests. I have a female impersonator, Frank Marino. I've got porn stars from the 90s that used to work for me Jenna Jameson, Felicia. You have Nikki her Tyler. cell phone? Well, I don't know if it works Jameson. anymore. I don't caller but i've had it yeah i still have it in there i have a hooker from vegas grandma gums <laughs> you say that with a straight face well, like that's I'm a, that was her name I, I, like i'm supposed to just take that at face grandma, value uh, grandma gums i have now, now obviously that's not her real name i would assume but not. she's called that's that she obviously goes because of a certain uh, correct she takes specific, out specific uh, whatever she uh, does thing i've known her for years i have a lot of sports. how old is grandma gums now she might be in her 70. And what does she get? Well, I know for, a long what does time. she get for have, for an appearance? I haven't talked to her in many years. Back then, it was like a deuce, two hundred. I don't know. Back now. then, she wasn't. She was grandma then. So now she's great grandma Gums, probably. Oh, listen, I don't know. Steve Orenstein. Oh, what do, What do her grandkids think of her career? Of, uh, listen, I haven't talked to the woman <laughs> in over twenty. Well, why don't we years. call her and see if she's grandma still... Gums? You want to call her on the air? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you got Grandma Gums. I got a lot of sports guys. <laughs> now, and they call her Grandma Gums because she she blows bubbles. She's uh, bubble young. Grandma and, Gums takes and, her, would take her teeth out when she went to work. Shall we say? That's uh, okay. Steve Orenstein, uh, the head of Wicked Pictures. Who is that? Uh, he owns Wicked Pictures. Porn, big porn thing. You want to go on a porn set? You let me know. You watch I them. Don't want to go on. A you can watch them. I'm just saying. I Have can, you been on? I can do that. You, I've been on. And what was that? Like? It's very smelly. I would imagine. Yeah. I, was, I mean, I was is, on it, like, in the is 90s. it just like another job or not really? Yeah, it's not exciting. You know, it's just like it's like watching somebody. It's very boring. You know, very boring. Bake and a cake thing, and it's like. It's the, I think the the idea of going on the porn set is much more exciting than being on the porn set but when you go but it's like i went in the 90s it's a long time ago when i they used to work for me we've talked about it in vegas uh, i got a lot of sports guys al harrington nba player alan houston i know alan houston david wells baseball player I have Mark david wright john franco uh i have Aunt dr fauci anthony fauci right here really i'm gonna call yeah he gave me the vaccine he came to my house Really? Sure. I'm sure you got bigger names than me. I have. Uh, I got a picture of Fauci from you. I have ago all in Bay the Ridge. living presidents. Each one, cell phone, personal cell phone, all of the living presidents. Which is who? Clinton, Obama, Biden, Clinton, Trump, Obama, Carter, Bush. You have all the. No you met Everyone. them. You've met them. I know all of them personally, of course. I keep. I, it's important to me. Well, you know who I have? I got Potsy from Happy Days, Anson Williams. I got Henry Winkler, the Fonz. I got Dice. I got Dice. 
Chris Rock, Mo Rocca, Belzer, Bobcat Goldthwait. You Penn, have a lot of comedians. You know, Penn and Teller, J.B. Smooth. I mean, I, uh, you know, Mario Batali you have. I, I have Mario. Matt Lauer. You have uh, Larry David? No. I don't. I got uh, Matt Lauer. I've got uh, the ex-governor of Nevada, Bob Miller. I have Dion, Dion and the Belmonts. You know, I used to, I think I still have Dion. I got J uh, John Ratzenberger. Who's that? From Cheers, Cliff Clavin. No, I don't have Dion anymore. I, I got uh, Kevin Dillon, Josh Bell, the famous violin player. Famous play. violin player. I'm a friend of his. People would never think we we hang out, and I've gone to see Why him. Why would people never think that? Because we're kind of opposite. He's a little highbrow, <sighs> plays the violin for you know wealthy people. And it's, you're not highbrow. He's a huge uh, star in his world of course one of the best he's one players. of the best in the whole world nathan lane who's a friend of mine because no, you worked with nathan on broadway michael stray yes i did michael stray and joe rogan joe piscopo john lovitz you got a lot of comedians a lot of comedians well you used to book comedians yeah uh but this isn't about booking these guys didn't work for me they're friends tony lobianco tony danza tony, i've never met tony danza Really? I've met Tony Lobianco. I like Tony Dancer. Joey Lawrence. I worked with him. Who's Joey Lawrence? Uh, what show was he on? Uh, he was on some show in, this, uh, in the 90s. I have a lot of musicians, not as, not as many comedians. I've got the Paul Savino, Rick Barry, Hall of Famer, basketball player, Rhea actors. Perlman, Paul Anker, Paulie Shaw. Rhea Perlman? I like Rhea Perlman. Yeah. That's Danny DeVito's wife, yes. right? Yes, great. Do you have Danny's number? I do not have Danny. I know Danny, but I don't have it. Randy Jackson from American Idol, dog. Michael Rappaport. I have Michael Rappaport. Uh, Paulie Shaw. I've got the... uh, Randy Jackson is one of the, not one of the Jacksons. Family, no, you know? no, fuck no. Do you have any of the Jacksons? No. I don't know. I don't know. Did you know Michael Jackson? I did not know him, nor do I want to know him. But I did not know Michael Jackson. Never came across him. Uh, I, unfortunately, I have... Like 35 or more people that have died. You know, I don't take them out when Me they neither. die. It's weird. I have friends who have passed. Me too. I have Jim's number. Me too. I've never taken it out. My I, mother's I have number. Lou Reed's phone number in here. I haven't taken it I out. I don't know why I don't take Jean the Claude number Baker, out. Jean-Claude Baker, my friend. A lot of my friends who passed, I don't just don't. I, it's weird. I can't I, bring myself to I do it. I have them all in the, in the phone. I also... Uh, Take out people when I no longer like them. Oh, I do that. I enjoy doing that. Yeah, it's like they're gone. weeding the garden. I call it. Yeah, yeah. they're gone. I take out. Yeah, yeah. I don't talk to you. You piss me off. You're a douchebag. I find out uh, the things that you've done or said. I don't like it, and I just take them out of the phone. That's the big check mark. I also have the cast of not everyone, but. Blue Bloods and Secret Life and Sopranos, you know, like you do. You have Tom Selleck in there? I do not have Tom Selleck in there. I can get it if I needed to talk to him, but I do not have him. Uh, Jocko from Sha Na Na. You can't top that. Jocko. No, you mean uh, Bowser. Not Bowser. Jocko. He's an original. I Bowser's believe... not an original? Yeah, he's an original. You know, Sha Na Na was at Woodstock. I know they were. I believe Jocko was at Woodstock. Which one was Jocko? He's a heavy set Italian guy. I don't know. Heavy set Italian guy. Who else you got? What's the biggest Patty star? Patty Smith. Oh, that's a big one. I like her. Yeah. I met her. John Bon Jovi. He's a big I don't star. have his number, but... Uh, He's a big star. It's big. He told me not to give you his number. You know what? I don't want his number, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> you know whose number I have? His uh, keyboard player, David. Him I like. David from John Bon Jovi? Yes. Then? I have David. John's a really good guy. I like yeah, John. I like John. Yeah. yeah, I like John. Our kids went to school together. Both of my daughters went to the same school. They were all friends. I have Spike Lee. I have his, he's a friend of mine. Uh, Josh Brolin. I have his cell phone. He's really? a star. Is this pre when he was... Uh, he's sober for many years now. Is he? I don't know. He's a good guy? Yeah. I worked with him once. We hung out in New Orleans. We went out, uh, hung out, went, gambled together. You know, now people are going to say we're bragging about who we know. Well, we're not bragging. We're we just, are bragging. But we're having a conversation. I don't know. I'm not proud of. I've got I got a lot of mob guys in my phone. 
that I've known over the years. You I'm do? not. I got a couple. I've got a lot of mob guys. Um, I may have a murderer or two in my phone. You may. I may. You never know. I don't want to know that. I'm just saying. I may have a couple of murderers. I have a lot of. Uh, I have a billionaire. Buddhist lamas and monks. Did you get the Dalai Lama? No. Does he have a phone? I I don't know. I don't have his phone number. You I don't have his phone. Hey, Dolly. What do you call him when you meet him? Dolly? Your Holiness. Well, hello, Dolly. Your Holiness. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Your Holiness? Yeah. Like the Pope. It's like meeting the, the Pope. The Dalai Lama's called His Holiness the, seventh, the 14th Dalai Lama. So, yeah, well, we bragging. I'm not bragging, but the people you know along the way. You mean, I, like I said, I got a lot of a lot of things in there. I got a lot of scumbags in there. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> All, right, All right, here we go. So this was written by Robin Green and Mitchell Burgess. 14 out of the 17 they were in. They were nominated for an Emmy for this episode. Directed by Alan Coulter. Number 11 out of the 12 he directed. He was nominated for Best Director for this. Hey, Michael, let's take a little break. We'll be right back. We start out, we're at the Crazy Horse. Crazy Horse. The band playing is the Chesterfield Kings, famous garage band out of Rochester, very much influenced by the Rolling Stones. Uh, they're playing their song, uh, Mystery Trip. That's the song that they're playing. They're on stage in the Crazy Horse. The Crazy Horse is a rock club, really. The, the, whole, the whole point of Adriana was her to get into the music business, which we established back in season one in A Hit is a Hit. And her thing was, and it was kind of, you know, I have to say, Crazy Horse booked some cool bands. Absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, unfortunately, uh, running a club in the music business, you know how it goes. You know, it's not just the bands and That's that. Hard. It's the shit and the bullshit and what bartender stealing <laughs> and, and drugs. waitress. And, hey, listen, they go look at nightclub and drugs and alcohol. That's what it's all about. People go out to enjoy themselves. And we see Tony coming out of the bathroom. He bumps into... Meadow, a bad scene. He's wiping his nose. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, you know, he's self conscious, you know, wiping the nose. And he's as she's saying, Who's your dedicated, uh, designated driver? He says he's got an office here. And listen, at some point, our kids got to the age where they were going out. And I'm glad we never ran into yeah. them. <laughs> yeah, sure. Absolutely. You know, right? I mean, at some point, you know, you're, you're, uh, how old is, is your Bria, your oldest? 29. 29. So about eight years ago, she started going out. Sure. And then you're, but you're, you're right, if you're out bouncing around in clubs, you run into the friends. You run into their friends. Terrible. <laughs> right, exactly. That would be terrible, right? Whatever you're doing. And then, uh, so he's self conscious. What we used to call that? How's Detroit? Isn't that a code for wipe your nose? How's Detroit? <laughs> How's Detroit? How's Detroit? How's Detroit? Clear and sunny. Clear, clear and sunny. No, no, bad Detroit. A threat. Bad Detroit. Go back. No, no. Clouds. Bad, bad threat, Detroit. Threat of rain. Uh, so he goes to, you know, I wish I would have known Meadow was here. He tells Adriana, I wonder, you know, what the fuck she's thinking. You know, he's there. And, uh. It's a little awkward. It's really awkward. Um, and then he goes to Adriana. He's kind of mad. He didn't get a heads up that his daughter was there. And she says, oh, the kid had a seizure. Vito and Eugene are coming. Meet him at Bud's Butter Bun. I don't know. He said a Broadway in 18th. I've never heard of that place. I don't know if that's a real place or what. Yeah. Vito's coming over. Patsy's coming over. And and, uh, and then Finn says, did I just see your father? And she says, well, he has an office here. And, and Finn's kind of giving because oh, Finn yeah. knows what, she, yeah, what he in, does. Yeah. He's like, Saturday night, that's dedication. Yeah, he's breaking balls. And she says, let's get out of here. It's very awkward. Uh, Agent San Severino's car. Tony's spending so much time at the club. She says, you think it's about you? He says, yeah, for you to hang out with you. And she goes... What, what did she say? I, I'm not going to blow the guy. Well, this now this time I watched it. I watched it this morning, this this episode, and for the first time, I think this whole episode, Adriana is setting him up, Be and I think she's setting him up. This whole thing of them kind of having this flirtation, she wants to set him up so she could throw him under the bus so Christopher and her can go off into the ah, sunset together. Right. I don't think it's about attraction. I th and, and if you look, there's clues that this is what's happening. She is doing this and putting herself at risk 
and putting her in harm's herself in harm's way because she wants to protect their relationship and run off in the sunset with her, and she's willing to throw Tony under the bus by getting close to him. Uh, I don't disagree with you in this scene, but later on when they're playing darts, I think she's setting I it up. I think that's real. I think she's setting it all up. All right. I don't think she gives a shit. About she says, it. "I think if you're gonna, you, if you think I'm gonna blow the guy for your sick purposes, forget yes, it." Yes, that puts the bug right in her head, right there. You think I'm gonna blow the guy for your sick purpose? It puts it. So she's thinking, "Well, if I do, if I do have kind of some kind of thing with him, I can get closer to him, get information, and they'll leave us alone." Okay. I, I think that it's that's not a what's bad happening. theory. I'm not disagreeing. Then she's got to make number two. She's got a bad stomach ache. Uh, the agent doesn't want to take her to go to the bathroom. I'll drop you off at the car. Very nice. Tony gets the, this is a good scene. What she also says, you know, the, she, Christopher, she's talking to the guy with the Southern accent, you know, she goes, check the log, you know, check his phone log. You yeah. know, she wants to get into the memorizes. Four is what, Atlanta? Atlanta, I guess 336 might be North Carolina or something. Now... You see later on, she's asking Christopher a lot of questions. She wants to get his cell phone. Yes. She asked Tony for the cell phone number. She's really doing this for the FBI. That's why I'm saying that's another, that's another re you know, thing that gives me this idea. She's really trying to work it here. You're really uh, trying to, uh, I don't know. I, I, I never I, saw that before. I, I, always, don't, I, don't, I don't disagree with I, that. I, I always saw it as they had this attraction and it was happening. And after... This, when I watched right. it today, I was like, wait a second. She Not is... Not a bad theory. Yeah. Uh, Tony's getting the melanoma removed. It's kind of funny in a way. Uh, the lidocaine is... It's a real close-up on his face That's scary uh it's a you know it's not doing too much how about a local anesthetic right. and they're very nasty the doctor the nurse is not very comforting his name is dr katz who uh is yeah the dr lewis katz is a friend of ours and yes. a doctor of ours who does a lot of the uh actors for actors many in years the city in new here. york yeah yeah. I used to live in the building where he his oh, really? office is. Yeah, over there Avenue, in the village, Ninth Street. I used to live there. Yeah, but it's played by David Deblinger, who's one of the co-founders of Labyrinth, which we've spoken of. They're one of the best theater companies that Phil, Philip Seymour Hoffman started. Uh, you Vasquez and uh, they're not very nice. They're who? Not very, the doctors, the doctor and the nurse. The doctor's very. No, you know, they don't have a lot of. They, uh, they didn't give me, he says, "Do your thing." He tells the nurse. Uh, Tony's saying, you know what, now she's telling him to hold it. Not very comforting. Did you get it all? We're not sure. All right. You know. Uh, He's getting a biopsy. It's scary. How were those apartments in that building? Nice. I was there a long time ago, 19, in the 80s. It's an old, older building, a, right off of Washington Square. It's on the corner of 5th, 5th and 9th. Right, yeah. It was across from Mary Lou's. Yeah, great location. I loved it. Yeah, yeah it was nice. Uh, doctor's uh, office, Adriana meets with her doctor. And interesting, we're cutting from doctor to doctor, Tony to Adriana, bringing those two, almost you're bringing their orbits together. You know what I mean? It's kind of cool. Adriana, it's again, I'm afraid to be away from the toilet. I'm scared. I'm going to have an accident. How's your personal life? GI disturbances, disturbances are stress-related. Stress Is there related. anything unusual that might give you the gym jams? And, of course, we know there is. There's the a huge FBI. thing that's given her stress. The doctor's hitting close to home here. He's not telling her what she wants to hear. She just wants some medicine. To she be wants to get rid of it, and he's saying it's your life, basically. Uh, he says, I'll see you in my office, which he gives her more information. Soprano Kitchen. Tony's giving uh, Carmela. He's very condescending. Here's your allowance. Here's your allowance. And she says, I hear you're spending time with today's youth. She's really, you know, and they're probably really like... The idea for Carmela knowing that he's in the club. Sure. And she doesn't say it here. She says it later. But Meadow said that he looked like he was coked up. Yeah. Which she probably already has heard. And she probably is thinking, what the, f well, you know. Exactly. What did you do to your head? Did you fall again? You know, he doesn't, well, don't worry about it. Why? Uh, he doesn't want to tell her about the cancer. She's painting still life. You know, eh, eh, when people get older or divorced or actors are out of work, they start painting or they? they rescue dogs. For real. <laughs> A lot of out-of-work actors, they become suddenly rescue dogs and cats. You notice that? I haven't noticed it, but it's a good thing. Now uh, start thinking about it. There's a great moment here when he says, what do you do it for? He's eating an apple, and he says it, and she doesn't answer him. 
There's so much in that silence. There's so much, and the two of them do so much with nothing being said there, because she's just saying, because he's saying it kind of condescendingly. It almost looks like fruit, you know. And and you, there's hurt in her eyes, and yet there's anger. She doesn't say a word, and then he puts back the apple that he, you know. No dialogue there for those little beats, but so much is said. It's and, great. and like you say, uh, what do you? It's it's so hard. Why do you do it? Right. If we all didn't do shit that was hard, you know, you and she's going through a hard time. He's, you know, he's know. been unfaithful. You know, they're breaking up. You know, the kids are getting older. She's, you know, it's uh, and it's the allowance it's, thing is a zinger. It's a zinger, and so is that. What do you do it for? It's like he's stabbing yeah. her, and she's 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 hurt. You know, and she plays oh, it beautifully. Course. Both of them do. Christopher's apartment, the bathroom, uh, Christopher shaving. Christopher Adrian, said, but, uh, uh, it's a great shot, the two of them in the mirror shaving and doing makeup, and, and, and he's like irritable bowel syndrome. Like he kind of... He's disgusted by it. <laughs> he's disgusted. His Aunt Josephine had colon cancer, a whole asshole rotted out. I got to know every detail. The but that's not something you really want to say to him. Of course not. And he also just doesn't, you know... Well, uh, he's, uh, you know, he's not very compassionate. And then she says, well, I may have to go to therapy, go up Prozac. And he says, for diarrhea. <laughs> He's not sure. And she says, no, to quote, but she goes, what do you got to be stressed on? He's asking, why is she? And somewhat legitimately, like, what are you so stressed about? The bar? Because he doesn't know what's going She's on. She's going the Middle East. The war? Middle, the Middle East. And he says, and now, the who president. Was it? Who was uh, the president Bush. at this time? Bush was the president. Bush too, uh, George W. Did Bush. he ever talk to you about... Like in this episode or not? He loved this episode. He did? Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, he, he marks a what? The bar, you know. Uh, then we go to the crazy horse in the office. Her stomach is bad. She's drinking white Russians. Right, like that's going to... Um... That's, I mean, you know. That's like when I when I was coming down with a cold years ago. I I, I, don't, I go out. I no. I drank the the Grand Marnier, you know that bullshit. But then I also drank. I must have drank fifteen fucking vodka <laughs> orange juice for vitamin C. Yeah, it's for such a ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, my resistance. You know. Uh, yeah, they start talking. Uh, Mimi said you went to the doctor. Who's Mimi? Mimi, I think is the waitress, the waitress that brings him the drink. I'm not. I'm sure. having trouble with my stomach. IBS. He's telling his her mother about... used to have that. He says he's got cancer. He re recommended cat doctor Katz Hesh recommended the doctor naturally. He of says. course, Hesh but then he's making dogs. a big bet, which is to come in episodes to come. He's betting three grand on a two on G. A... I mean, he's betting three grand on one team, two grand on the other. He's betting five thousand. Right, a lot of money. You know, they bond there, you know, over the medical stuff. IBS and cancer, you know, he's got squamous. I uh, think she is working it here. I think they she's are bonding. Tony's FBI flirting a little. Angle. I think she's totally working All right. it. Adriana, you, you're such a good father. He, you know, because he's got to leave. She says, you're such a good father. Wish my dad was like that. You know, you may be right. It seems to me he's, he's certainly... Very interested. I mean, yeah, but I think that's why she know. I mean, she knows he likes young, beautiful women, like you know, and he has a fan. Does that a lot? So is she off the hook there? Because do she's mean? doing that. Do you think she's doing it to save her and Christopher? I absolutely think so. So, uh, so uh, it would be okay if she slept with with who? With Tony. It would be okay with Christopher. You mean? No way. No, yeah. no, and it wouldn't be okay with Christopher. It would be okay with her. Christopher, little Paulie, and Eugene load up the truck. Adriana arrives. She and gives him his folic acid, which is weird. Uh, most of the time, you that's given for uh, as a supplement if you have anemia. Which, yeah, well, I don't know why. Where does that come in? I, 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 I might have something I looked to do that with up, him. Uh, she's she's obviously digging for information. That, there we go again. I'm saying the she's, jerk you were yelling on the phone. Why do you have to go? It's the cigarette thing you were talking about. She's really now. Yeah, she's working it. She's she wants information. Uh, and he says, listen, I got a fucking impaction. I can't take shit besides oil of clove because I'm sober. You have a stomach ache, you can take all kinds of dope, you know. Uh, and then Christopher tells us she's got diarrhea. 
He tells the guys. And they're disgusting. Tired. Everybody's disgusting. What's the big deal? You know? I, don't know. I, I find it disgusting. Yeah, I understand, but everybody gets it. Everybody's had it. Everyone's going to get it. We, everyone knows everything. Well, so what? It's gross, though. Yeah, I understand that. There's a lot of things gross. Yeah, you don't want to always talk about them. Uh, crazy Horse Office, Adriana's doing coke. That's you not know, the well, worst listen, thing for diarrhea. That's not going to help your it's diarrhea. It's usually cut with baby laxative. Yeah, I mean, that and like, white Russian is not going to help you. Fuck. It's the, uh, the absolute worst for diarrhea. That's not going to help you. Tony walks in, snorts a line. Now, co- have we seen him do coke before? No, this is the first time. But he's so kind of casual about it. You can kind of assume that it's part well, of Well, this isn't the first time he's doing it. No, no that he no. does it on a semi... I think it's the first time we see it. Semi, you know, regular basis probably. And, you know, they're doing the shit. You know, you, they start talking. Uh, you know how it goes. Bump, the song bump, bump. is Come From Me. It's Stevie Van Zandt, The Lost Boys, which is funny because he asked, what's this song? He She says, uh, The Lost Boys, Sill's been ragging me to play it. Their manager owes him money or something. That's Stevie. That's his band, The gotcha. Lost Boys. Uh, you know, when I first met you, I was scared of you, she says. She's, she, I'm telling you, she's working him. Well, that's, that's, that's a little, you know, that's a, come on, that's a little, you know, right there. You're not scared of me now, are you? No. They, they play, she could play, I've been hustled. Uh, listen, if Phil and, if Phil uh, Leotardo and, and Joe Peeps don't come in, they were going to kiss. I think maybe she'd be, you know. They were going to kiss. I, I they were, something was going down there. I really think that's She's on plan. her knees. She's picking up the darts. She said to the Fed, I'm not going to blow him for you. But here she's thinking maybe it's good if I do. Listen, they want Tony. All right? They want him more than they, way more than they want Christmas. Well, of course. Fed. So if she can find Listen, a way to give sense. him Tony, uh, you know. Sense. She doesn't Tony, want Christopher to go to jail. Uh, he's making his move. And He's see, the, think about it, right? The only way for them to really get saved is if Tony goes to jail. She doesn't want Christopher to go to jail. And Christopher could get arrested for any of the shit he's doing. So if someone else turns informant, the whole thing falls apart. Chris goes to jail. Her life is fucked. It makes sense So the only me. way for them to really get... I've never heard this. Have you heard no, this No, I haven't either? either. It just came to me watching it this time. Uh, Do you play darts? I wanted to ask you that. Are you no, good at darts? No. I played... But I, I'm not. You're not, not a that good. Guy. I'm not a. I'm not a dog guy. I played uh, three pool? times. Are you a good pool player? No, I'm terrible. Ping pong. It's awful. So table games are not your. I mean, board games, table games. I'm kind of just a boring nothing, to be honest with you. <laughs> table games, board games. I don't like. They're they're mocking Christopher and. Uh, the constipated auto look. At least I could drink. And Phil comes in. He's a little suspicious. They're I got to tell you something. Frank, Frank Vincent is great. He's great. In these yeah. episodes. He's a prick. He's so He's good. just, yeah. he's really good. He's yeah. really good. Uh, this is one of the last things he, he's done. He's, and he, he's perfect. He yeah. is so good. Yeah. Melfi's and very And very funny. There's something yeah. comical oh, yeah. about Phil. Oh, yeah. And he's not trying to be funny. But he makes it. He's he's excellent. Very I, mi- good. I miss him. He was a great uh, great actor and a good dude, man. Great drummer. Yeah. Great drummer. He yeah. invited me. He he did a thing in some restaurant one night, and I, I remember it was raining, and I, it was a couple of the guys were there, and I don't know exactly, but he was playing, and it was fantastic. You know, we were right. having dinner, and then we bullshitted, and it was like a little restaurant, and he was great. Uh, thank you for, uh, Tony, thanks for taking the appointment. I deeply regret what I did. I know I'm on probation. My nephew's fiance. Well, nothing happened, but it could very easily. I mean, she really got to me, this young lady. Yeah. Melfi's ecstatic. This is a big step that he didn't fuck her. Yeah. And then he says, I mean, and this I find really bizarre. Maybe, you know, this would be a good, uh, we could do it right, start a whole new family. It's like, yeah. he's, where what, did this come what from? is he thinking? She's drop dead gorgeous. Start a new family. You know, yeah. it would kill Christopher. Uh, I mean, he hasn't even <coughs> had sex with her yet, and he wants to start a family, new kids. I mean, he's yeah, He's scandalous. delusional. This is scandalous. He's also delusional. 
I guess. Yeah. He well, he also is an egomaniac that thinks that because he's the boss, he could have and deserves anything yeah. he wants. Like when he thinks that Danielle, office, who's agent Deborah, had a thing with, for him. You know what I mean? It's a lot of guys. You, isn't yeah. that guys you, we know? They think every girl's hitting on them. Right. I mean, you, we've all known these guys. Yeah, yeah. Constantly, yeah, I think she wants to fuck me. Yeah, I know she wants to fuck me. <laughs> In their fucking head, they figure it out, right? Uh, uh, you know, uh, she thinks this is progress. It would kill Chris. It would do this. Uh, but there are these mob guys. They, they kind of snatch away women. They do, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, these big bosses, they kind of tell the guy, listen, she's with me now, and, you know, bah, bah, bah. Kind of like in Scarface, no? Scarface, he takes the girl from uh, Robert Loggia, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Mar uh, Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah. Uh, Adriana meets with Agent San Severino. You need to find out where Chris went. I'm getting this vibe from him. Who, Tony? He's really nice. He listens. She's kind of... You know, uh, well, he's an alpha male. He's kind of attractive. I'm not going to fuck him. I love Christopher. Sooner or later, we're going to get out from all this and leave the state. She also says that. Tony had ducks. Tony had ducks. Does that have something to do with saving the family? I don't know. That's West Hudson Park in Harrison, by the way. And uh, then we go to the FBI agency. And she says, she's a good-looking woman. She wants to fuck Barney, Barney Rubble. Rubble. She's referring to... Tony as Barney Rubble. Did you like the Flintstones? Were you a big Flintstones fan? Oh, I love it. Yeah, it's kind of the, the honeymoon is. Well, Jackie Gleason almost uh, sued them. Oh, yeah? Hanna-Barbera, because it was very much the Honeymooners. Well, they were a version of the Honeymooners, as was King of Queens. Oh, yeah, but the cartoon was... Uh, I'm just saying, you know. Uh, I love that when they used to have Cary Grant, Cary Granite. Tony Kurtzstone. St Stony Curtis. And Marg Rock. And Marg Rock. Steve Sharip Rock. I was in uh I was in, well, you in the Flintstones? Flintstones too, the second movie. Fever Rock Vegas. I played a crab dealer. Uh, who played uh, uh Mark Addy played was Fred. Fred. Uh Stephen Baldwin was Barney. But you know, you know, dinosaurs and humans never really cohabitated. Yeah, I know that. You know that, right? And you know, the uh, comic used to do a joke, you know, like on the Flintstones. Remember uh, the cat jumps out the window and Fred gets locked out? Yeah. And uh, he used to do a joke. Why come Fred doesn't go in the window that the cat jumped out? Too small. Was it too small? It was a round hole. It's too small. Yeah. Looked like Fred. Anyway, I would think Tony looked more like Fred than Barney Rubble, don't you? Yeah. I agree. What? Huh? But Barney Rubble's a little more, uh, con I guess, a little more of a dig, you know? Barney was a nice fella. He was more... Popeye. He... I liked Popeye, too. Yeah? When I was yeah, a kid. I did. Uh, Popeye was a real guy. What do you mean he's a real guy? He was. Now you're jerking based, me he's off. He's based on a sailor. Now what you're you jerking mean? me off. What sailor? Based on Pops somebody. His name was sailor, Pops. A sailor named Pop that ate spinach? What about Wimpy? I used to like Wimpy. Wimpy, yeah. Huh? The hamburger. He ate all Olive the oil. Uh, crazy horse club. Uh, Tony's dressed. He's in a suit and tie now. He's looking sharp. He's going to make his move tonight. He's going to catch a nap. 40 winks, he says. 40 winks. He's going to go in the back there, in the back of the club. and Sure. Why, why there? I found that odd. Well, where's he going to go? He's dressed. He's sharp. Uh, Patsy's bringing somebody by. I need to use the office. And she is, it seems to me, though, here, she is purposely doesn't want to go in the office because she doesn't want to put herself back in that position, Mike. But she is asking for a cell number. He I'm just saying, give. she, you know, I hear your theory. I don't disagree. But here it looks like I got I to gotta take care of the floor more. She's kind of making an excuse so they're not in the back doing whatever, talking, blah, blah, blah. She's keeping arm's length. She's bobbing and weaving here. Mm, eh, I don't know. Uh, I've, I'm no? not so sure about that. Okay. Then we cut to the end of the night. They're cleaning up. He's looking at his mole. He's paranoid about cancer now. He's looking at moles. They're doing coke. Cross-eyed. They, no, they don't do coke. They want to get coke. She says, I want to score some coke. 
cross-eyed Billy. He left the bing already. What, the, the drug dealer goes home? So what? o'clock. No, they close at 2. All right. Jersey. So what? Then he goes home? That's it? You're a drug dealer. You stay up all night. No? I don't know. In Jersey, they close up early. Uh, she has a friend, Andre, who's always up, who deals coke. He's out in Dover. Dover is what? About uh, 45 minutes from Belleville. Yeah, it's not. It's That's pretty far. It's pretty far. It's like. That's an hour and a half round trip to go get coke. It's way out of the way. It's hard. And it's late. It's two in the morning. It's hard to cover up while. uh, It's hard to cover up while while they're there. Also, she says, you know, my friend Marlene likes you. Isn't she like over 30 or something? Yeah. It's like. But she. But he also. Uh, she says she's going to stay up all. She's going to get coke, stay up all night, and clean the apartment for Christopher. That's what her plan home. is. Because yeah. if you think about it, it's an hour and a half round trip. That makes that puts you there at three thirty, and you're doing coke. He's coming in the morning, so she's going right. to pull it all night here. Right. That's the plan. Uh, she asks about Danielle, the girl, the agent Deborah. And, and and Adrian says she's dead. She drowned at a picnic. Yeah, that that's funny. It made me laugh. So I guess that's the first thing that popped into her head. She didn't have that planned. She didn't have that planned. You yeah. know, she's dead out of nowhere. Danielle from Whippany. She's dead. She drowned at a picnic. Tony swerves. There's a raccoon in the road. See, that's another thing. And I'm an animal lover. When you're driving, and there's a rabbit, or there's no fucking swerving. Unfortunately. The rabbit got to go. Yeah. Well, I mean, unless you can swerve. I hate it, but you know what I'm if, saying. If, if it's safe. This, this, this was dangerous, and look what happened here. Sometimes you just got to. It's like a pigeon. People stop for pigeons. You got to go. You got to go. Would you stop for a rat? If a rat was in the road and uh, blocking your way? I'd try to avoid it. I don't know if I'd stop. I mean, that's really dangerous. Yeah. Uh, the, That's a great stunt. The car flip, you know. Oh, yeah. Flip. Did you ever get into that, that kind of accident like that? Nope. Good. We did. I was with uh, Fernando. We wound up on the side like that, just oh, like that. Oh, that's bad. Yeah. Went over a wall on a country road. Too fast. Went up. I, I was in the passenger seat and wound up on our side. Years ago? Yeah, we were kids. We were uh, teenagers. Uh, you get hurt? No, thank God. I got T-boned. On my way home from work in Vegas, a drunk fucking guy, and somehow he got away with it. And he, I had a, a, a 1986, 86, 82 Camaro with T tops, beautiful car, brand new, first like big purchase. And I was on my way. That's home. what you had. That's what you I had. You had a Camaro. I fucking destroyed me. Yeah. You didn't get hurt. I got hurt a little bit. Yeah, I got like. My knees, I think I got like 15 grand settled. No, nothing broken. Uh, no, but I fucked up my knee. I had to go, you know, Therapy. legit. Yeah. I'm not, I don't believe in the uh, f- uh, faking it, you know, faking no. the, for the insurance. I don't, I'm not a, you know, a lot of people do that. They'll go, they'll go to the doctor, they'll use a cane, they'll fucking put a boot on for six months, wear that neck thing. I'm not, I don't believe in that. You know, I've never done that. I'll tell you what, my wife, Lost her wedding ring. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Three, four years ago. And it was insured. Okay. It was like the band or whatever the fuck it was. And we called up. We said, we lost the wedding ring. We, you know, we had a jewelry floater. They sent the check in in like two days. Who, the insurance? The insurance. Oh, you had the jewelry? It's just like that. So listen, we, we uh, my wife, you know, I don't know where the ring is. It's gone. So what? You had it insured? It was insured. And they sent the check. And my wife said to them, if I find the ring, I'll be happy to send you the money back. And she found, we found the ring like three weeks later. He sent it it's back? Under the bed and sent the check back. They must have said, who are these fucking nuts to send the check back? But I said, I, don't, I didn't feel good about it. That's, I think it's really good you did that, Steve. I mean, I'm being that serious. I didn't feel good it's about bad that. Bad karma. I think it would have been bad karma. It I'm is. not. I'm it's, not a. Yeah, it's called stealing. What do you yeah, mean? yeah. I'm not a believer. I, but you know, a lot stealing of people is do bad it. They stole my car, and they said I had, uh, you know, a video camera, and I had fucking, uh, uh, you know, uh, golf clubs, and I had this, and I had that. You know, they pump up the charges. Yeah, I, that's called stealing. I don't want to do that. Just, <laughs> you know, basically. Uh, 
Hospital emergency room. That's a friend of mine, Hill Harper, playing Dr. Yeah. Davenport. We know him from CSI New York. He was in The Handler with Joey Pants. He's on The Good Doctor now. You know, his first TV, he was recurring on Married with Children. Really? And his first movie was Get on the Bus with Spike Lee. He's also an author. He's wrote a series of books, Letters to a Young Brother, Letters to a Young Sister, Let Letters to an Incarcerated Brother, Inspirational Advice to young people uh he's a very smart guy and a really good actor and good good dude man hill harper is he in your phone maybe i don't know i haven't checked i should check i haven't seen him in a long time uh i don't know okay uh hospital emergency room uh, tony sits on the bed the doctor arrives uh i reviewed your chart ruled out eternal injuries you're free to go tony you not uh, it's a bad accident uh, are you sure you did all the tests? It's kind of doubting the guy. You think he's doubting him because he's black? Well, that's what the the doctor assumes. And is this is kind of funny because the doctor says, my grandmother was the first, basically says, my was the first doc, you know, the first, uh, I guess, fe black female doctor in Delaware. Hill Harper's mother was one of the first uh, black uh, woman anesthesiologists in the U.S. Oh, really? Yeah. He says, I have a middle degree for a medical degree from John Hopkins, Johns Hopkins. The young lady I was with, they said she was okay. Can I see her? He goes to see her. She's got a neck brace. I don't remember what happened. You okay? Uh, she's banged up, Adriana. Tony, not so much. She's banged up. She doesn't remember what happened. She doesn't remember. She's anything. really good. Uh, Andrea is really They're good. They're both really scene. good. And so so Jim Jim was excellent in this whole episode, really. Yeah, and he this says scene, we, we need to talk about. About Christopher coming home. This is a scandal. It's a brewing scandal. It's a scandal. We go to the garage. Our My old friend, uh, Anthony Rubastello, uh, who shame. passed away a couple of years ago. Shame. I met uh, Anthony. He plays Dante Greco in the scene. I met him. 1989, we did an independent movie called Fathers and Sons with uh, Jeff Goldblum uh, and Fomka Johnson. It was, um, he, he was a good dude, man. I miss him a lot. You know, yeah. he ran for Bronxboro yes, president, yes. won 13% of the vote. Yeah, he is, uh, uh, Anthony was a beautiful guy. He was in Get Shorty too, I believe. Right. Uh, little, I yeah. really uh, enjoyed Anthony. He was a soft-spoken Big guy, soft-spoken guy. He was a Bronx guy, a really good dude. And that's a, another friend of mine, Duke Valente, who plays Corky DeJoya in that scene. Duke's a good dude, too. Uh, uh, I hit the fucking mother load. Uh, Chris is uh, very happy. 20 Gs of product, and he sees uh, on their face. He's, they, give, uh, they, they give each other a look. He's like, what, what? And they said, Adriana's in the hospital. He's like, what? Is she okay? Yeah, she, she's in Dover, Dover. And then he makes, uh, oh, it's our rants out there. And Tony, he's, you know, Christopher's trying to save face. He's trying to cover. Yeah. So he's, uh, he, you know, uh, everyone knows about the accident. Chris can't believe it. The guys know. He's he's putting making up a story about the ant and Dover. Uh, and, you know, uh, what was Anthony Rivestello's guy? Dante. Dante. Greco. He says, uh, and, and Tony didn't have a scratch. And he says it in a way like, he doesn't like Tony. You believe this guy got away with it, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Christopher's car, he's driving Adriana home. Great scene, great scene right the fuck here. Uh, I, I almost got killed, Christopher. He says, what the fuck are you doing in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the night with uh, Tony Soprano, yeah, in a car? You really were angry. Did you have to get, did you have to get revved up to do this? Probably. Think about uh, angry things. Think about angry things, yeah. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, you know. Uh... Things that annoy you? Besides this podcast, what annoys you? <laughs> I don't have all the presidents in my phone. You know that. I was kidding, right? No. <laughs> I don't have any presidents in I my phone. I didn't know that. You don't... Do you think I'm going to have all the presidents Listen. that I call them regularly? Listen, Barack. Listen, Let me ask when you, you tell you? me something, <laughs> I believe you. Every single word that I've said on this podcast since last April 6th, our first one has been, you could take it to the motherfucking bank. No, I don't bank. have the presence. I was just trying to come off like a big shot. Okay. Well, I take every word 
Wow, serious. Listen, I was trying to come off like a big shot, and and okay. uh, you know, I don't have any presidents in my phone. I wish I did. Were the other people real? Bon Jovi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody else was real. But you, you know, don't I have, have John Voight. I have him in the phone. John Voight, that's a good one. One of the biggest stars. Everybody in the else world. is real. I, Anthony Fauci did not come to my house to give me the vaccine. So he's you got, lie. He's so got you, much more. Important so now things I to don't do. know <laughs> myself. And did the, you think Dr. Fauci came to my house to give me the vaccine? If you tell me that, I believe you. <laughs> come on, man. I don't listen. I had to go out to. So Brooklyn now I to have to. Vaccine. What I have to watch what you say, pick and choose. Maybe. So I have to now. I got to figure out if, on top of all the other shit, I got to figure out if you if you're telling me the truth or not. <laughs> Doctor Fauci comes to my apartment while did trying to save the universe. Did dinosaurs? No, they definitely and people didn't. exist, or didn't they? Well, some people think they did. Some people, you know, some religious religions think the Earth is only four thousand years old. Are you really a Buddhist? That's true. Is that I true? A, I am a Buddhist. Uh, I'm a Buddhist. That's true. I don't have the presence or Dr. Fauci. Well, I got a picture with Dr. Fauci from an event. I have a picture with President Clinton. I did, and I did meet uh, W. Bush with Tony Sirico. Uh, I met Trump before he was president a long time ago. Who else? I never met Biden. I never met Obama. Those are the only ones. I don't know, man. I don't know. It's a little fibs. Don't they have, a, is that a sin in Buddhism? You're allowed to lie? Uh, is, depends, that why, is that why you like Buddhism as, a person, as opposed to it being a Catholic? It depends on the intention. You could lie and lie as a Buddhist? No, you're not supposed to lie. You could lie? You're not allowed the to Dalai lie. The Dalai Lama could play second base as a softball team? That's not true. Okay. Uh, that, that is not true. I know somebody said that, but that's not true. Uh, Christopher is livid, rightfully so. Uh, he says, I was working to pay for, for your Coke and alcohol and all the other shit you shovel in your mouth. I mean, you he is pissed. I've seen you like that. I've actually seen Michael. I get like, like that. that, yeah. Uh, two o'clock in the fucking morning. Don't lie to me. I can't stand it. I mean, he is as pissed as he's ever been in this series. He's really pissed. What were you doing out in the middle of nowhere in the car with my uncle? Uncle, cousin, I mean, all that bullshit. I don't know what he is. You know how this looks? Shut your mouth. He knows what's coming. All right? Yeah. Bada bing. The, the bada bing. Back room. Tony obviously summons Christopher to straighten this out. He's cleaning the dog shit off his shoe. Then he gives the stick to Christopher. That's all calculated. A power move. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't think the dog shit was calculated. You think he stepped in shit on purpose? No. No. But I think... Giving him the oh, stick yeah. and saying, he throwing wants it to away. Say, I'm the boss, and you gotta fuck, you gotta deal with my shit anyway. But he tries to be. He says we were talking about you that you're the best thing that ever yeah. happened to her, which is not true. Complete lie. As uh, Tony breeds, Tony lies. And then he says, "Well, you should have married that girl." Uh, you know, two years ago, she's a knockout. You're and over you're your average. Head. You're out she's of your a league. 10. She's a 10, and you're average, you're out of your league. And then he's, Christopher says, you're the biggest coos, hon, her, coos hound around your midlife crisis. You'd fuck a catcher's mitt. Now, let me ask you something. Have you ever fucked a catcher's mitt? No. Or uh, uh, not even a first baseman's or outfielder's mitt. Or, Nothing. No. It would be hard to no fuck mitts. a catcher's mitt. No. I don't know how that would work. I knew a guy that used to fuck two pieces of liver. He would buy no, liver. No, he didn't. Come on. <laughs> Where would I make that up from? Come on. They called it the old liver trick. I'm telling you something. Why liver? I don't fucking know. I mean, I'm just the messenger, man. I didn't do it. I didn't see it. I was told this. Not cooked liver, <laughs> raw liver. Raw liver, yeah. Uh, That's as a sign man. of power, uh, I told you should have married the girl. And uh, it would be very hard to fuck a catcher's myth. He swears on his Why kids. Why catcher's myth? What does that have to do with it? What do I catch his man? Like he's making a point. You'd fuck anything. Yeah, but, but, just, but why uh, catch Girl him? after girl after girl. Uh, there's no nothing going on between me and Adriana. Swear on my kids. Everything, everything I hold sacred. Everything sacred. Yeah. And Christopher knows that he's nothing but a liar. Uh, now, the guy's talking on the I, phone. I love this whole sequence. Very funny. It's just hilarious. It starts on the phone. 
There's uh, Dante, uh, Anthony Rubastello. He calls Paulie, who's getting a manicure, who calls Silvio, who says he was, she was giving him a blowjob. He calls Bacala, who says the paramedics found her with his cock still in her mouth, who calls Hesh, who says statistics show most single car fatalities are a result of guys having an orgasm, calling Junior, who says he came all over the sun by, and Junior got this, Big smile. is just enjoying it. He's smiling. And it's fucking hilarious. And then Agent Robin's on the phone coming out of the Sip and Dunk and Carney and Agent Deborah tells her. Guess who went down on Tony Soprano? So it's a game of telephone. It's hilarious. It's really good. Pork store, back room, Hesh, Vito, Eugene, Patsy playing cards. And Vito says when Christopher was in rehab, Adriana was calling him all the time, which I don't believe for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, he, he says, uh, your Brajol isn't even that long. Uh, we're talking about my Brajol. They're laughing. They're laughing about Christopher. They're mocking him. They're making fun. Uh, Hedge says if it was his girl, she would have been Suck a sucking tailpipe. a tailpipe. He would have killed her. We're just talking about my Brajol. Christopher comes in. He's paranoid, but not in this case. They're laughing. He knows what's going on. Well, listen, know? when you walk in a room and everyone shuts up when you walk in. You know they're talking about you, you know. Uh, I'm a fucking captain. You don't talk to me like that. Now, Christopher's not a captain. Or is he? He's not a captain. No. So Vito's above Christopher. Vito, yeah. Vito moved up when Ralphie's gone. When Ralphie's gone. gone. Yeah, he's older also. And, you know, but Christopher doesn't. How many sandwiches did you Chris have to throw at him? Christopher doesn't give a shit at this point. He calls him a parade float. What's so fucking funny? He's just pissed off. He's he doesn't care. You know, uh, there's a desperation. He's sober. You know, and often when you're sober, you know, he's not sober that long. Your emotions, uh, you know, you're not you're not quelling and put crushing down your emotions, so they come. So it's very hard for him. Uh, how many sandwiches did you remember. throw? Do you remember? I don't remember. What was in the sandwich? Uh, I don't remember. You don't remember it was that? probably like a Italian combo. Yeah. Like a gabagool Back then and you were eating mortadelle. That. Did Probably. You eat I didn't eat it. I was throwing it. They, 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 they used to make good sandwiches on the set, yeah. They also buy, you know, 35 sandwiches. Yeah. You know that. Well, they were making them. I don't know if they were buying them. They were making them. I mean, you know, like yeah. when I, I eat a lot on Blue Bloods, and they, they'll buy 30 sandwiches, and I'll take a few home. Yeah. They ask me what I want. They call. A few days ahead of time. Where do you like to buy sandwiches in the city? There's uh, uh, Anthony and Son. Where is that? Is, uh, well, a few places, but Anthony and Son is in Williamsburg, Greenpoint area. What's great. the place in, in Red Hook? DeFonte? Uh, DeFonte's is great. That's really good, yeah. Great, great, yeah. great. Larry and... Uh, that's a good sandwich. Oh, shit. Place. They've been there over 100-something years. Uh, good people, family business. An incredible sandwich. Uh, then uh, Postillo's. Where's that? Postillo's, listen to me. It's on Nassau Street in the financial district. It's kind of like not a lot of people know about it. They do, but they don't. Look at it. On up. Nassau Street. P-O-S-T-I-L-L-O. -L -L it's uh, north of Fulton. North on of Nassau. Fulton. Okay. And uh, real Italian sandwiches. Incredible sandwiches. Incredible. What's it called? Postillo, P-O-S-T-I-L-L-O, -L -L -O. and they have stuff that are, you know, Vegetarian stuff for you stuff. that could eat. Mozzarella it, and stuff. That's yeah. great. I like them. Uh, another great place in Brooklyn, Leone. They have a sandwich named after me, every Italian guy. Maybe they have one the of Steve you. The Steve Sharippa? Yeah, the Steve Sharippa. So they have a bunch of guys, you know, What's a bunch your of Italian sandwich? actors. Oh, I forget what it is. But what, usually what I order, I'll order... Uh, a salami, provolone, with uh, maybe some uh, eggplant, uh, ratatouille, what do you call it? The, uh, Campanata? Yeah, oh. like that. I also have, uh, last night, I brought one off for work, salami, Swiss, tomato, mustard. I salami, like that. Swiss, tomato, and mustard, yeah. No, I'll not have, mayo. No, and salami and mayo the, is the a no-no. makes a great uh, eggplant uh, Egg, uh, bomb. F Fantastic. Uh, also, they make a really good... Uh, Potato and egg. Green. Ooh, with cheese. And also, oh, they on Fridays, they have the sandwich 
Galama, fried shrimp, fried galama in a sandwich. Like a po' boy, po boy. kind of thing. They have a ton of uh, other different names. The Paul Savino. They even got the Pat Cooper, that motherfucker. Which you definitely, even if I, even if you love the ingredients, you wouldn't eat I that. was starving. I wouldn't eat a Pat Cooper. You were starving. Sandwich. You wouldn't eat I it. would fucking starve before I ate a sandwich under his name. And I, for a moment, I was going to say, if you want my sandwich, you got to take his down. Because I've actually, oh. I've actually done that. A restaurant says, "Would you give us a picture?" I say, "You got Pat Cooper. You take that down. Wow. I'll give you one." Wow, really? You've I done did that. it in Vegas, Roma Deli. I did it. Now, uh, what if I go and I had the Pat Cooper? Would you be upset? I would be very upset. You would. Fuck you would hold I, that against me. Friends of my enemy are my enemy. Well, I'm, I'm not doing it for him. Enemy of my enemy what, are but, my friends. I'm not doing it to honor him. I'm doing it maybe because I like the ingredients. I, I don't care. Go to another store. Well, what and get if it I else. tell them? What? I don't know. Put it on a different bread. Then it's not a Pat Cooper. Then it's right? not a Pat Cooper. But you if can, I go in there, if, if you I order in, a Pat Cooper, if you said I want the Pat Cooper, and I find out we're gonna have a problem. Wow. Your loyalty is. That's how much I disdain I have for this human. He's really the only one. Really that that bad. <laughs> no, he's not. Really, Steve, the only you're one. doing a whole. You know, a whole variety special on yeah. a series of people yeah. that you feel that way. But about. those are the sandwiches: Pastillos, Defantes, Leone, Anthony and Son, Leone. You have that sandwich with a Manhattan special coffee soda. You know, I love it. Heaven. It used to be a place on Sullivan, Malampo, that made some great sandwiches. Parisi's, right? They've been Parisi. around a long time on Mott Street. Mott Street. Parisi. I, I, Aliva made a good sandwich, too, right? You get sandwiches. Where? You know? uh, on Mulberry Street. Aliva? Oh, yeah. I've never, I never, you know what? I don't think I've ever even been in there. Yeah. Great sandwich. Nothing like a hero. I mean, uh, when you know, it's right, it's right. Yeah. yeah. But in New York, we call it heroes. Uh, other places, a grinders. Call it a grinder or a sub. We uh, actually, we used to call it a hero or a wedge. A w oh, really? A wedge, a wedge. in Mount Vernon. Yeah. Uh, you got a grinder, a, he right? a hero, grinder, sub, uh, hoagie. My grandfather, my father's father, his name was the same as mine, Michael Imperial. He. For years, my and my grandmother, the two of them, they had sandwich shop. Uh, it was called S and M Deli, Sue and Mike, but the name of it was S and M Deli, in the Bronx by the courthouse, the South Bronx. Good sandwich. They were known. People used to line up, and they had customers for years who would always go. Every day there were different specials. Some days shrimp salad, but the classic Italian heroes, they were known for that. He had a, several different locations all in the South Bronx for years. On into his seventies, he would wake up like four or five in the morning, wow. go to the market. One of the places had pizza at one point, but then he stopped with the pizza. There was a fire, and he it's had more to, move. to a sandwich than this slapping the no. He was ingredients on. They it's, were famous. People used to go line up outside. People are artists, business, you know. Yeah. Uh, also, the White House in, in Atlantic, Atlantic City. City. That's a good sandwich. That's a big one. Yeah, right? that's a you good know. spot. Yeah, yeah. You know, New Orleans has a lot of good sandwiches. I had some good. Uh, had some good ones there. Good ones, yeah, yeah. Uh, with the muffaletta. Muffaletta and the po' boys, yeah, they 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 know what they're doing. Down California, there. they have the one place in Santa Monica. Which one? There's a uh, one really the legit sandwich place in Santa Monica. Oh, on on Lincoln, that place. Yeah, one, I know they have one, one place that's near Broadway in Lincoln. Because in California, you know, it's one thing I don't I don't like Subway. Subway sandwich shops, I don't like Subway's. No, no, I don't. Uh, but they, they have one in Santa Monica is pretty good, you know. Uh, Chris and Adriana's house. Oh, uh, it's just, just an incredible scene. And it, now it, Georgie. This is what won you guys the Emmy, this scene. Georgie says, I, and I think it was the one in long-term parking, personally. Really? When she tells about the feds. Maybe for her, I don't know. But he says, now, Georgie told Chris that the surgeon said, he was most. Georgie she, is the bartender at the Bada Bing. Is, not is the it, brightest no, guy the, on the, earth. The surgeon sure. said he was moaning Tony. She was moaning Tony's name, which yeah. is. This is really out of control now. And he just comes in. She's just having a glass of wine and she's going to cook for him. You fucking lying bitch. She was sucking his cock. Georgie told me everything. The surgeon on the everything. You were moaning Tony's name. What were you doing in Dover? And then she admits it. 
that they were going to get coke. I was going to see Andre, but I wasn't sucking anybody's cock. She says, I love you. And he fucking hits he, her. He beats her badly. That's and, sad. And, and, it's very sad. It's very sad. It's very... When she really says, rough. I love you, I didn't do anything. And he does have a good... You know, what were you going to do? Got a bunch of lines in the middle of the night. You're going to go fucking bird watching? Everybody knows about it. Everybody's talking about it. And then he yells, you want me to use... You want me to use... He goes through drugs. a bag looking for Coke. Doesn't find it. He goes to the bo- uh, vodka. Starts chugging it. It's a brutal scene. How long did it take you? Do you remember how long it took? I don't remember, but you know that um, the hair, grabbing the hair, that was really, I mean, I think they, they must have put some some kind of extension, a wig for me to grab, but it was, you know, those are tough, tough scenes. And she was, uh, you know, Dre was just fantastic. Her, oh, acti- her acting is so good, and she's... Um, you know, she gave a hundred. I think that you have to be good friends to. You got to trust each other. Good. You got to trust each other both physically because it's dangerous. Because yeah. if you if you fuck up, you know somebody can get really hurt, and often they do. And you have to trust each other emotionally to go to these dark places and feel like the person there has your back because you're exposing a lot of yourself and you're vulnerable. Um, you know, and 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 uh, we we did that. You know. uh, Tony's house. AJ watches TV. Tony arrives with a pizza. Thought you had an algebra test. Uh, chill out. So AJ chill wants out, to keep yeah. pushing the boundary. Yeah, he certainly does. I would punch him right in his yeah. face. Uh, Tony B comes. I need to talk to you. Tony B. I love that he's he's wearing his uh, laundry shirt, but it says Luis. <laughs> <laughs> the name, which I think is just a great little detail. Tony know? B, I went to the Belleville Tavern, which is a real place, a famous place. Is it? Yeah. Huh? Famous place. After work, Larry down there said our little cousin was all fucked up, meaning Christopher. Somebody told him what was going on in the car. There was nothing going on in the car. Now, great little moment by Steve Buscemi. There's a little hesitation. No, no, of course not. You know, he goes, no, 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 uh, of course not. But I think there uh, but he thinks there was. Tony B thinks. Everyone thinks there was. Of course he's going to deny it and he's going to go along with it. Not, but, but I think Tony B generally does want to make peace. He beat up Adriana. He threw her out of the fucking house. He was saying some crazy things about you. He's not right in the head tone. Who knows what the fuck he's capable of. AJ's watching... Uh, UFC or something. UFC, yeah. MMA, uh, you know. And Tony brings in a pizza. A pizza. Which we'll see in the next scene. P- what, what, what pizza place is your favorite pizza? Well, I have a couple. Um, by the Slice in the city, I like uh, Pizza Suprema by the Garden over there on 8th Avenue. Oh, yeah, you like that place. You know that one? Yeah, that's good. They make a good slice there. Yeah. Joe's on uh, Carmine Bleak over there yeah, still makes a, a good bunch of slice. Now. There's one in Williamsburg. This one. There's one in Santa Monica. Oh really? Yeah, uh, right by the promenade. But the one, the you know, it used to be on the corner Bleak and Carmine. Yeah. I used to live across the street when I was in my early twenties. I used to like, I survived on that. But now they moved a few doors down. They still make a good slice. I have yeah, to say. Yeah, and there's another one on Fulton Street. Downtown. They make a nice Joe's is good. Uh, I like thick pizza. I mean, I like Ben's. You know, Ben's. Uh, on Spring Street. On Spring Street. They make that grandma's slice yeah. that I love. And Spumoni Garden's my all-time favorite. I like Harry's. I've had. Uh, Harry's isn't by the slice. Frank uh, from Best Pizza in Williamsburg. Uh, that was yeah, how delicious. Is that? Really good. I heard that. He's I heard good. I heard yeah. that. Uh, That's a good slice. I think slice. there's one on the Lower East Side, I just side went too. to F&F on Court Street in Brooklyn. I had two slices there that knocked me out. They were fantastic. F&F. F&F Pizza on Court Street is great. Yeah. Uh, I like uh, uh, Da Vinci on 18th Avenue in Brooklyn. I don't know. I like Totono's out on uh, yeah, Neptune. That's not a, yeah, not a slice place. That's on that. Neptune. That's not a slice place. That's good. I, I like Sicilian. I like a square pie. Yeah. You know, that's what I yeah. uh, I like. Yeah. I like this. Uh, Mount Vernon has a couple of good pizza spots. Actually, there's one that's really famous, Johnny's, that people come from all around, up from the Bronx for, that's still there. I was there when I was a kid. And Joe's in Mount Vernon. Those two are very, very well known. There used to be a place called Lincoln Lounge. There used to be a strip club in Staten Island named Lincoln Lounge. 
Oh, really? Yeah. Staten Island has a good pizza place. I forget the name of it. And, and the Bronx, there's one that near my aunt's house that's really good. Uh, near, uh, I guess it's near, like, Pelham Bay, maybe? Um, and uh, Connecticut's got those uh, Franks and Peppies. You ever try to the clam pie and all that? I've been to Sally's in New Haven. That's yeah. a good one. They make a good one there, yeah. And... Uh, there used to be a good place right on Mulberry uh, called, I think it was called Half Moon or something like that, or Full Moon, right between Canal and, uh, what is that, Hester? Yeah. That was f fantastic. It's there's a there place, uh, there's guys from Brooklyn moved to Laguna uh, out there where I uh, have a place, and it's called Brooklyn City Market. And you got to go on the website, and they make incredible pizzas, incredible pies. I don't even know if it's a brick and mortar place. Yeah, but it's uh, good. it is good. The real deal. You know, California. They say the water. You know, I don't know. I got my buddy John LaMonica. He owns places where he makes the dough in Brooklyn, makes yeah. the dough in Italy, and ships it. He wow. makes the dough. Well, what do they with, do over with, there? Uh, Mulberry Street Pizza on. Uh, in Beverly Hills, that's Richie Palmer's place. Yeah. My friend Richie. I think I was there. They're del that's a delicious slice. I think they get either the water or the dough from New York. That's what I'm saying. My buddy has that company. Maybe he, do you know, he also owns a place in Westwood. Yeah. Uh, uh, he owns a pizza joint that's been there for thirty something years, and they he makes the dough with New York water. Yeah. And uh, that, you know, that's what they say, if that's the truth. I mean, I think it's more the sauce. Well, the, you know, in Rome, there's a, in the old, you know, the, the, the this historic center of Rome, the pasta there is known to be some of the best. And a lot of it's because of the water. The water there apparently is served by aqueducts from like, ancient Rome. Mm -hmm. uh, and the coffee. There's that cafe, I think it's called Della Pace, in, right in the uh, historic center of Rome that's known for the best cappuccino. I've been there a few times. It's delicious. And pasta in that area is fantastic. Roman pasta is really good, like the uh, Amatriciana and the I gotta uh, get to Carbonara. Well, I used to eat the, remember at uh, uh, Cinque, we liked that place. Yeah. Uh, when it was open uh, was down in Tribeca, it's... Uh, uh, that Amatricana, I see it all the time. It was yeah. really, they really made it well there, you know. Uh, and Casio Pep in uh, Rome, too. Fantastic. Uh, Soprano, uh, Tony, T uh, Tony drops AJ off at the house. He hears Christopher's on the warpath. He wants to make sure he doesn't come over to the house. AJ put him in harm's way. Uh, what do you want, Tony? You couldn't bring this in himself? Why, I can't even come in and talk to you? She knows. She knows that age uh, Christopher's going nuts and aj's in danger and she's heard the rumors which it's really, a very small town where they which live. really pisses her off Bill, I Bill, mean, that the, area. but this is also insult to injury and his philandering and svetlana and you gotta maid. put your son in hiding it's because just, of your philandering i think it really grosses her out that that he's because she probably believes it oh yeah he's oh absolutely she believes it chris is upset that's all he, he could come over he could say some things the kids shouldn't hear I don't want to look at you. Uh, she drops the pizza on the floor. He leaves and then comes back. Comes back together. Very funny great moment. Detail. Yeah, a really yeah, good. I like when she he goes. She goes. Fuck you. Fuck me. Fuck you. Right. <laughs> Which is not very clever, but in an argument, that's the things you that's say. That's where you go. About a bing. Christopher pulls in the parking lot, slams on the brake. That's his H two. His two thousand three H two. Yeah. Gets out with a bottle of vodka and a gun. He shoots up Tony's car. Would would he be dead if he did this? Probably. <laughs> I mean, if he did this to Paul Castellano sure. or a big mob boss sure, back in the be, day, of course. Yeah, John Gotti, you kidding he me? He would be dead, right? For for no other reason that you you can't do that. No respect. Bada that. Bing, Tony, Tony B, Silvio, Paulie are playing cards. Christopher comes storming in. Where are you, you fuck? The I gun love, isn't loaded. Uh, the gun's empty by now, but I love. Silvio with the megaphone. <laughs> Christmas you know what to do down there. It's all over. An unhappy customer. Christmas Enjoy starts the shooting but has no bullets. Frank, uh, Frankie grabs him. Uh, Siragusa, Frankie Cortez, Tony Siragusa, who played uh, 12 seasons 
with the Colts and the Ravens. The kid's not showing up. He's probably uh, in some gutter. That's what Paulie says. Paul Horn is funny. Funny touch. It's really funny. Then they take him out. That was shot in the swamps near the Meadowlands. I got. Oh, is that know, where this was? Yeah, when we did this. So they dragged me out of the car. And I was struggling. And at one point. You don't see it in the... Sh uh, I don't think they use that angle or that take or whatever. So these two big guys have me. Uh, Tony and Duke, I think it was. And I, at one point I was struggling and I kicked off the car. So I, like I was trying to push away and I, you know, pushed away by pushing my foot against the car. And I went and I broke free of them. I went up in the oh. air up in the air and landed on my mouth. Oh. And they had to fucking hold on to you. What the now, fuck? I don't remember. Now, I'm thinking. And this was who? Saragusa? And and and, uh, and Duke. He's so, six foot fucking eight. Now, man. listen, I'm thinking, you know, and like then they cut and I'm th and, and it just it. I mean, I hit hard and I'm thinking I, I think maybe my teeth are fucking broken yeah. or whatever. Uh, Grandma Gums. Hardly a scratch. It was very weird. I landed. I went up in the air, landed face first on the freaking pavement. Just a little bit of a bruise. I was so lucky. Oh, I really thought I was going to be in big trouble. Did they use that? No, you don't see it in the shot. It was it was scary, really scary. They call you Grandpa Gums. Uh, you draw down on the boss of a family. You lied to me. You were scoring coke with her. So what? I can't relieve stress every once in a while. I don't got enough problems. And now you sent me to North Carolina so you could fuck my girlfriend. And, of course, what kind of fucking animal you think I am? The thought never even entered my mind. <laughs> He's just a liar. Paulie tries to save me. him. He must have known the gun was empty. Tries to defend him, but Christopher's ma Christopher's really out of his mind, and at some point he's like... But he's not begging for his life. No, he's almost like he's so fucked up, and he, now he's drunk Fuck and maybe it. high. He's thinking he's going to die and whatever. To fu you know, he's just desperate. And Paul, then Tony, he's trying to help Chris, but Chris goes Chris after Chris gets him. mad, and then Tony B says, try it my way. And Tony's going to kill him. Do you think he's really going to kill him there? There's a lot of people, a lot of witnesses if he's going to kill him. Too many people there. There's too many people, I don't but think it would he might have just way. given the gun to someone else and make him do it. He's yeah. the boss. Uh, Tony B. in this uh, hospital parking lot. Tony B., Dr. Davenport. I love the pan at the top of the scene. So it starts in the back of the car, pans across Christopher, who's smoking, and then it pans into the front seat with Tony. And it's just a moody, you know, dark, atmospheric. It's a nice, it's a really cool shot. I really liked how... Uh, Alan did that. He's he does a lot of that oh, stuff. He's, he's, he's just great, awesome. Great. You know? uh, Doctor Sor uh, Doctor Davenport, played by Hill Harper. Uh, Mr. Soriano, what seems to be the matter? It's Soprano. Uh, you're an excellent. That's what I brought him here, and he doesn't want to cooperate. Tony B gives him a veiled threat. What about yeah. broken kneecaps? What about oh yeah? You know, if you don't talk to us, they get, they all get in the car. We need two minutes. You're an excellent doctor. Explains to him the gentleman uh, here is the fiance of the young lady. Now he's got into his head that there was oral sex going on at the time of the wreck. Naturally, he's very upset, so I need you to tell him it wasn't. Chris said the doctor would lie. And then Tony B, who is very smart in this scene, says, Well, if there was a seatbelt, there'd be abrasions. He has a U.S. physician. He says, no, I'm pre-board certified massage therapist. <laughs> and he says, no, yeah, there were abrasions, which means she was upright, which is the truth. Tony uh, tries to tip Dr. Davenport. You can't tip doctors. I've told you that. You've tipped some doctors, right? I not, not tipped, but I... Bribed? I know a friend of mine that has tipped doctors for prescriptions years ago in Palm Springs. But uh, a doctor takes gifts. They like gifts. I don't know about a Everybody tip. Everybody does. You know. I don't know about a tip. You know, I don't know about uh, a bribe. I'm not into that. But, uh, you know, bring the doctor a little gift. He likes it. You know, they're, no, they're regular people. Do you get tipped? I, uh, not many years. 
Yeah, I don't get tipped. I used to get tipped. Not too great. You know, it'd be great if the producer tips you once in a while. You yeah. do a good scene. See, you put your, good this, job. If Thanks for your trouble. A couple hundred in your top pocket. <laughs> Steve, the you director. Were, you were extraordinary there. Steve. Keep Steve, it up. You're really good. You get tipped. Extraordinary there. They give you a tip. That's a new concept. <laughs> Let's talk about that. <laughs> hey, or they say, they give you a tip, say, can I get you to do one more take here? One more take. Hey, come on. Make man. it I, a good one. I had a hard out at uh, 8 o'clock, man. Make it a good one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Tony <laughs> tries to pay Dr. Davenport. Uh, I guess I believe you. You threw food at Vito. That's got to be resolved, Tony tells Christopher. But at this point, uh, now it doesn't make any difference. Even if it wasn't true, it's what people think. Which is a good, I like Perception. that scene. I like the scene a lot. It was a good scene. I, I look I like, like Joe him. Jerkoff. Joe Jerkoff. Have you ever met Joe Jerkoff? I've met a bunch of Joe You've Jerkoffs. Met him. You've met him. Oh, uh, there's so many Joe Jerkoffs. Um, that's a good scene. I like that. Uh, really good scene. Well written, well House. played. Carmella. Oh, then he goes. He goes to Melfi's just for that one line. I might as well have fucked her. Thanks. He says to Melfi, That's funny. which is hilarious. I didn't fuck her, all, and I got into so much trouble. All this trouble. Carmela comes in the back door. Tony writes, "Oh, so you believed all that shit they're saying, huh? Am I that horrible?" Kind she of. just stares at him. And yes, she says, are. where there's smoke, there's fire, Tony. Meadows said you were coked out at the crazy horse. So she's thinking, you know, in her mind, she's putting it together. Okay, he's hanging out at the crazy horse. He's doing coke. You know, he's he's in a car with her at 2 in the morning. Carmela, of course she believes it. Fine, so it's all about me. What do I mean? Nothing to you. Carmela says, I got to live with this swirling around me. It's never going to go away. Uh, They're great. Edie and Jim are really good in this. Tony says, yeah, he comes right back. You know I don't do drugs. I don't do drugs. I mean, he lies as he breathes. That's what I'm trying to say. He's backpedaling. Uh, he wanted to have sex with her. It just didn't work out. I mean, you know that. Uh, uh, Carmela's hurt. She doesn't believe him. She's hurt, you know? And she says, you got to put a good face on this thing for me. For the kids, for the family. I got to bail you out of this never-ending bullshit. It's never-ending your bullshit. And they're they're... The two of them, Edie and Jim, brilliant. In this. Great. Just that's, that's, just doesn't get better than those two. And uh, Agent San Severino in the car, we'd like permission to put a listening device in your business. This relationship with Tony can net us a lot of chatter. Don't forget it's him we're after. It's no relationship. Fuck you. I do enough for you people. You're not bugging my club. It would have been Christopher alone in the car with a woman. I would have Which killed him. Which is a very telling statement right there when she says, if it was Christopher alone with a woman, I would have killed him. So she's basically saying, you know, it's that kind of abused, you know. But he's hit a so many times before well it's that abused men you know kind of traumatized mentality she's saying you know he was justified in what he did I he's mean, hit her so many times before and that's an unfortunate thing uh vesuvio restaurant tony carmella and so quintina this reminds me of there's two great italian movies both by the same director Piet uh, pietro germi uh, there's Sicilian, set in Sicily, two movies. One's called Divorce Italian Style, which is with Marcello Mastriani and uh, Stefania Sandrelli. And Seduced and Abandoned, which also stars her. Uh, this whole thing about honor, you know, and there's, there's a scene in one of those movies where it's very similar, where this big display, because there was this transgression... And now they have to do this big public display that everything's okay and that the honor of the family's preserved. And this whole thing is staged. All the guys are there. That's all deliberate. They were they were told by Tony, you're going to go and have dinner at Vesuvio. You're going to see us all together. I want you there. I want you there. I want you there. I want Vito. You're going to make... You're gonna go make it, make things right with Christopher. This Vito's is, very funny. It's very awkward. He it's, comes it's over. It's formal ladies. and polite and uh, orchestrated. It's really funny. The gravy's good tonight. <laughs> he says. It's very funny. He's very funny, Joe. Yeah. Uh, uh, and this is interesting. The song from uh, the opera La, uh, La Rondine by Puccini. The aria sung by Luba or This music, Organa I want to gouge my eardrums out. Oh, it's incredible. I, I want to really? gouge my eardrums out. I think it's, I, think it's, oh, I love that aria. God. I've heard that many times. It's yeah. amazing. Well, you don't like that? No. Well, no. interestingly enough, that song was playing 
in the pilot during his first panic attack when he passes out. And here we are about preserving family, and the panic attack is about that fear of... If they would have played that at Whitecaps uh, on the Stugats, if they would have played that, the, the guy would have gave up you, in a fucking you, second. I think it's a brilliant song. That I don't know torturing. I'm not saying it's not... Listen. It's not your very thing. talented. They're, they're terrific. Puccini's it's not my fantastic. thing. You kidding me? I went to Puccini's house in uh, Luca in Tuscany. Uh, it's preserved and? there like a museum. It's it's uh, his his house is in Lucas, which is a walled city in Tuscany. It's really incredible. I like to gouge my eardrums out. God <sighs> Almighty! Well, you're big into techno, right? Techno. Moby. You're a big te I like Moby. techno guy. I like Moby. You like electronic dance music, don't you? Well, you know the music I like. I like you like Bill. Van Morrison. Billy you like Joel. Sting. I like Sting, Billy like Joe, the Rolling Stones. I like Jamie Cullum. I like Who's Jack Jamie Johnson, a piano player, I terrific guy from England. I like. Uh, you like the Stones? I like right? Latin music. I like the Stones. I like the Beatles. I uh, like the Allman Brothers. Allman so Brothers. A lot of kind, all kinds. You of like music. ZZ Top? I like ZZ Top. I like. ZZ Top. I, like uh, I don't know all kinds of shit. But Pacini isn't on my fucking list. <laughs> now it's time for the Talking Sopranos <laughs> Ask Me Anything segment. The winner of our AMA Best Question of the Week is Mark from Charlottesville, Virginia. We're sending Mark a pair of Bose headphones. Mark asks, what was the atmosphere like on set? Most of us fans want to believe it was a real party. Uh, please tell us there was a lot of eating, card playing, and ball breaking. Well, we used to run around a lot in speedos and oil ourselves up, and between takes massage each other <laughs> and uh, you know compliment each other, uh, uh, dye each other's hair. A couple of the guys used to give manicures and pedicures to us. Comb each other, braid each other's hair, and stuff like that. Um, listen. Yeah, there was a lot of fun, but like, listen, when there's work to be done, there's work to be done. If a scene was a very heavy scene or was a difficult scene, it wouldn't, you know, when you're on the set, there's not a lot of fucking around because a lot of work has to get done. And, and if you're not shooting, the crew is setting up and they need concentration and focus. You can't go, go crazy, but then you have dressing rooms or trailers. Sirico and I did a lot of gambling on, uh, we would bet on horses a lot. We didn't play cards that much, but t Tony and I used to uh, bet horses a lot. We'd call in bets to OTB. Uh, he had an account, and we would... Uh, I would come into your races. trailer. You had a bigger trailer. I had a... I had a big trailer on location, not at the studio. I had a smaller yeah. one on the studio. But uh, I would come in. We would order food. They would Sometimes order food for us. We would, we would eat. We'd watch Italian TV, food. we'd watch the Yankees, if we watch had a big, game. If we had a big break, we would go to a restaurant. Sometimes we'd go to a restaurant. Uh, you know, it depends on the scene or who's in the scene or what, and what the vibe is. But, like, when a lot of us are there, it was always fun. We liked being together. We had a good time together. Yeah, um, but like you said, it's serious. If you've got a lot of stuff or emotional stuff to do, you don't really want to fuck around. You know what I mean? No, you Well, can't. you got two lines... I got no pressure. You know, we got right. not much to do. We can fuck around and laugh and joke and break balls and decide where we're going afterwards. But if you and if you had a big scene, you know, you got to you got to save your energy because you might be shooting your close up of a four page scene at four in the morning. Absolutely. Uh, you know what I used to like when we got out at a decent time, yeah. like you know seven, seven eight, eight o'clock. Go out for dinner. We you know. Yeah, go, you know, we want to go, get Jim, me, you, you know, whoever was around and, and go to dinner and then go. Especially if we had a late call the next day or, or we're no off call, the next we were day. Off and go off into the night. And back then it was uh, like playing for the New York Yankees, being on the Sopranos in New York City. But, uh, you know, I don't fuck around much. Usually I sit in my chair, like even now, I got a fan on because I'm always hot. I got a fan on and I concentrate on what I'm doing. There's not, you know, you have laughs here and there, but it's not one big fucking circus. No, you got to do, you know, you got to do what's going on. We used to, have, I mean, uh, Jim, Friday night, Jim would always have sushi delivered, you know, kind of on the later side, like maybe eight, nine o'clock, he'd have his big and sushi spread. 
for the crew. I was it Fridays? There was a masseuse Friday. once a week. Friday was sushi. Every what was night. her name? Bra- uh, Brandy was it? Uh, Amanda. Was no, it Amanda? I thought it was Brandy. Once a week. Uh, once a week. Uh, and you know, it was where they bring one of those things where you kind of sit in, you know, yeah. not lay down. And uh, yeah, chair massage. Yeah. She would give uh, massages the, all day the, long for the crew. Jim was always crew taking care cast. of the crew that way. Well, some I liked hanging out. Um, Jim Jim had a, uh, a a turntable put into his trailer at one point where he oh, had, really? was spinning vinyl, and he had oh, big big speakers. Uh, he loved Green Day. That was one of his big. I know you know, he, he and ACDC. He loved really loved him. Yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. And uh, but what was funny was so when you have a trailer, you have a teamster who is in charge of that trailer. He drives it to the set, and he k- keeps it clean, and he makes sure that you know he's in charge of that. So Jim had Steve Zooks, who was a by then he was in the seventies. He was a veteran, you know, oh, yeah, and a hysterical be, 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 guy. Forty years, 35, 40 years. But Jim, but, but Steve Zooks, uh, it became like it was his trailer. So sometimes Jim would come back from Jim's on the set shooting. He'd go back to his trailer, and Steve would be entertaining people in the trailer, giving them drinks, fans yeah. saying that Jim. He yeah, used, to, used to call the take, broads, can, toots, Yeah, toots, can toots. you take a picture with my friends? And you know there'd be. People and Jim would walk in. There'd be people in Jim's trailer drinking his scotch or whatever, and That's it was like uh, funny. that happened very often. But and he also Jim also had uh, bicycles. He and had, he had those little those little bicycles that kind of fold, so he could exercise. On and he set. would like he was on set takes, all the time yeah. between takes. And if he wasn't tired, he would take a nap at lunch. Uh, you know, we would sit around. Like I said, you can't. You know, it's part of the expression, but you can't shoot your load too early. You got to pace yourself. So you might be there for 16 hours. You came in early in the morning. You didn't get much sleep. And, uh, you know, you got to pace yourself. Sometimes you're sitting around for three or four hours uh, in between takes, and then they skip a scene. And, you know, you got to be around, so you kind of got to preserve your energy. We would sit around and bullshit if it was a nice day on location, get the chairs sit together, outside, fuck yeah, around, sure. break each other's balls. Sure. I used to call Tony Paulie Peanuts, Tony Sirico, Paulie Peanuts, and I used to break his balls. Remember when I used to, I've done this to him, I must have did this to him. 30 times like if we would go on, go somewhere and i would oh like i would be telling you hey michael you gotta see the suite i got i got a butler i got four bedrooms it's a fucking suite and i would do it in earshot of tony every time he believed me what the fuck <laughs> And then one time I really did have a better suite than him, and he wanted to come upstairs. And I, you wouldn't let I him because you him. knew he was going to get pissed off. That's good. So, yeah, there was a lot of ball breaking and bullshitting and picture taking and a lot of fun. And Yeah. You know, but when it's time to work, it's time to work. You can't fuck off always. That so is there true. you go. Uh, that is Mark. Mark. All right, man. Charlottesville, Virginia. Good question. And uh, no card playing. I don't remember card playing. A no. lot of eating. A lot of eating they would send out for food. And don't forget. Sometimes every... they had, once in a while you get like a, a Spumoni Gardens. If somebody sure. would run out there. Katz's Deli. Katz's Deli. Which is a famous deli. Um, uh, then also. Little, uh, they Sometimes they'd go down Little Italy. Uh, we were working, if we were working really late, there's that second meal. And that would come in late at night, and they would order pizza, chicken palm, veal palm, all kinds of Chinese, sushi. You know, the food was good. Yeah. That's for sure. So thank you for that. Thanks for listening. Remember, new episodes are released every Monday. Please subscribe to the Talking Spanish Podcast on YouTube, Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you get your podcasts. We're up to 108 thousand subscribers on youtube and climbing so please keep going folks uh you're doing great and that's great and we really appreciate that follow us on twitter and instagram and like us on facebook and right now you get official talking sopranos merchandise which includes steve sharipa motherfucks the world mugs tank tops t-shirts uh so 
Go to Talking Sopranos merchandise, TalkingSopranos.com, or through our YouTube channel. Our executive producer is Jeff Sussman, producer is Andy Verderam. Our music was composed and performed by Elijah Amiton. You can hear more of Elijah's music and the band Zopa, which Elijah and I play in together by clicking the links at TalkingSopranos.com. Our production crew includes Ty Verderam and Sierra Sharippa. We record Talking Sopranos at NYC Podcasting on the lovely Lower East Side of New York. It is New York's premier podcasting studio. Talking Sopranos is a Pod Jams production. All right, man. See you next wow, week. Wow, we went through a lot. We found out a lot today. We did. <laughs>